looked like it was some confusion about the tank. Did I get something wrong? All right. Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um, welcome to uh, the Bro Diallo uh, broadcast, Bro Diallo show. Um, I'm thinking some folks had some issues with the time. I'll have to check that. Um, the Bro Diallo, 7 p.m. Mondays. Mondays at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm not sure if I did something wrong. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I did something wrong. It's all my fault. But I see that that looked like some folks was uh, confused because, you know, I'm broadcasting straight out of the sanctuary hypocrisy. That is the city of Chirac, state of Drillinois, United States of America. Ka, ka. So that would kind of give us all the orientation, unless I'm not. I'm on my way to Los Angeles in. Um, man, when is it? Oh, next month. I got a couple of weeks. I'll be in, in L.A. in a couple of weeks, and I'll uh, be in New York, the other coast to coast, in a few weeks. And where else? I'll be in Kansas City in a few weeks. I don't know. But wherever I am, if I'm if i am got the facilities and the hookup, you know, I, I do have what I need to kind of go remote. So if that happens, I try to uh, still be on time. You know, I wasn't here last week because it was Martin Luther King Day. And I be goddamn, I pick cotton at night, you know. So if if the the man give us a feller a holiday, a day off, I'm taking it. I'll take it. So anyway, how y'all doing this evening? I was busy, man. I swear to y'all, the Lord. Or let me close this vent. I'm sitting right on top of the damn vent. Anyway, the Lord, or Obatala, or the or or or. or or is it Amun Ra? Some higher power didn't want me to come in here and say what I had to say today. Jesus Christ. Some supernatural. Um, I'm going to be in. Uh, I'm going to be in Los Angeles. I don't know. Just L.A. Where the planes land. L.A.X. El Segundo. Wherever you wherever they got vegan food in Los Angeles, I'm being L.A. and then I got to drive up to Santa Barbara and back down. So I'm going to be all up and down the West Coast. Fool, 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 fool. Cuh, 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 cuh. You know, so I don't know. But I'll, I'll have more details as the time approaches. I, I'm going to try to make it to. Um, I'm going to make it try to make it to uh, which I was there last year. Yeah, I think it was last year. Last year, I went to the uh, Black Film Festival in South Central. Beautiful. And and the, some of the, the movies and presentations and poetry. There was poetry and arts and crafts. Man, them fools on the, on the West Coast, them L.A. cats. They know, man, culture, man. Culture runs so deep. Black culture, African culture runs so deep on the West Side, which ain't the fresh side, but it's maybe the best side. I don't know. I'm 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 landlocked. I'm from the no coast. I'm from the Midwest. So anyway, I've been grinding all day and I'm not a grinder. I tell you, I'm a proud. I'm proud to say I'm not a hustler. I'm not a grinder. And this can the king. Since my alarm clock went off this morning up until the moment I had to run down the hallway and and, and run upstairs, run down to come and sit here. By 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm a little early. Y'all made me jump the gun because I saw in the comments people were acting confused about when we are supposed to start. You see, it's it's 7. That's when I'm, I'm on time for us. I, I know. But anyway, I, I, I'm not accustomed. I have to fingertips to chest. I'm flabbergasted. You know, I'm a man of formal education. I am a gentleman of letters. So, you know, on some days that I have to grind like a peasant, manual labor <laughs> i mean from the moment i got up from the moment i sat in this chair y'all i've been going non-stop so i might say some things i don't have to say because i am exhausted 
I am tired. And I've been throwing back green teas. I've been throwing back green teas just to keep myself afoot. I know it's not healthy. I know it's not a right thing to do, but I'm tired, y'all. And uh, so, you know, just a disclaimer. I might say some things I didn't have to say today because I am exhausted. I am of not of my right mind because, again, me being a man of letters, being being a man of refined taste, I am not accustomed to this this waking up can the cane from the moment my head lift off the pillow to the, my feet touch the floor and just running and grinding and working and non-stop i just got a plan better i don't know buy a bitcoin what is that i gotta y'all send me some of them get rich quick gurus because i gotta get rich i can't live like this <laughs> anyway i'm still happy to be here uh, or, or like I said, maybe it's just not that I'm not planning my work or, or distributing my time and managing myself and my work and my task and obligations properly. Maybe it is supernatural forces that didn't want me to bring this message. But I know God gives me free will. So God wouldn't stop me from sitting here saying what I have to say. So is it the devil? But I mean, many people would say argue that I'm on I'm about to speak on behalf of the devil and I'm bringing devilment so I don't know I don't know if it's a supernatural force but I'm like when will this day end and my wife don't have no sympathy I call her and be like yo I gotta go back over here I gotta talk to these contracts I'm calling my wife to complain about my day and she's like I could tell she didn't give a damn she's supposed to be my help meet she's supposed to what is it be my peace <laughs> I'm going to uh, listen and send me your favorite manosphere. Send me your favorite manosphere, dude, because my wife is not being my peace. Send me your get rich quick gurus and send me your manosphere gurus because I'm going to need some instruction because things ain't going my way the way they supposed to go as a cisgendered heterosexual alpha male. Uh, but I'm not high value. Maybe that's it. Oh, but like I said, send me to get rich quick. Send me the manosphere shit so I can not have another day like this oh man myself anyway this is gonna be a hard ride now disclaimer today's discussion is going to be saving the savior and i tried to have this discussion with a follower of, of the lord a, a, a saved christian someone who has accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior i wanted to not just have my point of view atheistic anti-theistic someone who has not only rejected the church but enthusiastically conducts myself in a way to encourage others to reject the the church and 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 someone who says without apology that religion all the 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 formal religions and non-formal religions male chauvinist murder cults delusions collective delusions and even spirituality when y'all try to say well i'm not religious i say rel spirituality is religion for lazy folks everybody i'm unapologetic and when the the horn when the ram's horn is blown on the mountaintop i've had a black hebrew israelite says when the war horn is blown and the and christ calls his host and the flaming chariot opens up the sky he said that he's gonna come look for me personally personally and decapitate me on behalf of the almighty so i'm going to half a dozen hells and i got half a dozen warriors of christ and warriors for 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 the almighties the various almighties that have said that when they get the call when the war horn is blown they're gonna line up for me they're gonna auction me off so i know everybody knows don't think that i can legitimately fairly and unbiasedly discuss such tap such issues as religion and faith and the believers so i did being fair and balanced as i is i did want to have this discussion with someone who is, has accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior and they refused but i think it's something we got to talk about so it's on me and let me address one of the fallacies. Oh, yeah, that was telling me what the, the title of the show is. Uh, what's the subtitle of the show? Let me talk about one of the fallacies. Because today, uh, 
If I pull it up, is it going to start? Oh, post-colonial Christianity. Post-colonial Christianity. And I'm going to try to start comments and come back to them. Um, I did want to talk about one of the main objections that people give. A lot of people come to me publicly and some come to me secretly and be like, brother, I agree with you. I think you're right on all that, but your approach is wrong. And the reason they say my approach is wrong is not because of what I say. Like I said, people that tell me I should respect God, I should respect people's beliefs, I should respect people's faiths, I should conduct and speak in such a way that it's not offend them. And, but they never argue. I said this already. They never argue that the religion is respectable. Like if I walk down the street like Snoop Dogg and I said, you know, quoting him bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks i said you know if i got on here and said these females if i started got on here and said that people could come to me and say well no they don't just say well you should show respect to women they could say women are worthy of respect they have earned my respect they deserve my respect they have conducted themselves in such a way that i should respect the sisters show some respect to the sisters because the sisters are respectable now they could also argue respect for respect's sake be good for goodness sake be respectful for respect just be respectful because respect is an inherently good thing which it ain't respect is relatively neutral respect is a disposition and a and that is reflected in certain behaviors that should not be given to everybody because let me tell you something about the people who respect everybody they respect ain't worth shit it's same thing like y'all ever seen that movie fresh go see fresh when well, there's one point in that movie where the young protagonist our young hero was like i'm gonna get out in these streets do what i gotta do because don't nobody love me and his cousin or a sibling says to him grandma love you and his grandmother was his caretaker but she had like two dozen other kids she was caring for and i've seen this with my own eyes them them, them sisters in the hood that got like three bedrooms and each bedroom got a set of four bunk beds in each bedroom and people have to use the bathroom on a schedule you know i've seen that right and uh she's he said i'm out here doing what i do and conducting myself the way I conducted, because don't nobody out here love me. And then he said, Grandma loves you. The, the young lady who was trying to convince him that somebody cared about him. And he was like, she loved everybody. <laughs> she loved every black child on this planet, every hundreds of millions. Her love don't mean shit because it's for free. It comes, it, it comes with the package. You know, it's 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 a feature that comes with the car, it's not an extra. It's like seat belts and, and the window button, the roll down the window button. Nobody's going to be like, oh, shit, your car is fly. You got seat belts. Oh, you got standard issue door handles. Oh, you got factory rims. Oh, people only want to go and be like, your shit is fly. If you get some extra shit that don't come ready. Now, I don't agree with this sentiment. I, I, I'm not saying that this is an appropriate sentiment. I'm just saying humanity even the good ones and the bad ones we tend to honor things or have higher regard for things that are rare or hard to secure hard to do if i say man i crossed that street i went from that corner to that corner cross that street people will be like and what are you telling me that for but if i say i climb mount everest climb mount everest they'd be like god damn that shit's hard right people be like i got these beautiful i think this is beautiful this is, I mean, I think I'd be on here just stunting on y'all, but nobody really trip off of me because, you know, these are relatively common glass beads and ceramic and glass is something relatively easy to get. But if I was here on diamond and gold, even though that shit is common too, y'all have been indoctrinated to thinking they're rare, you value it more. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with respect. I think my respect is worth more than some people's respect because my respect must be earned and it must be sustained 
Meaning that if I have respect for someone or something or organization or an institution, they must first earn my respect. And once they have it in their possession, they must nurture it. They must care for it. They must sustain it or else they will lose it. Who remembers Mad Cobra? <laughs> I'm showing my age. Who remembers Mad Cobra? You remember he had this song called Hard to Wet, Easy to Dry. Hard to wet, easy for dry. And, you know, it's a suggestive song. His, I think his biggest hit was called Sex, Time, Girl Flex, Time to Have. So, you know, he did raunchy music. But it, basically that song is like, it's hard to get someone stimulated or into you. And it's easier to turn them off. It was a, that was a banger. Hard to wet, easy to dry. So I, I have to put it on that level. I have to come down to y'all lower chakras. I have to appeal to the lower vibration. I have to Cat Williams my shit and say some base level shit to, to, to articulate these high ideas. So that's how I feel about respect. My respect is hard to wet and easy to dry. It's hard to get off and it's hard to turn off. It's easy to turn off and it's hard to get off. I think I've beat that point down enough. So I think because I value my respect, I hold my respect in high guard. I got high value respect. So anyway, I, it, it burdens me and it tires me how people always want to argue with me about the respect I have, and I can't never get the argument to move over to, is this thing that you're asking me to respect, is it respectable? Has it throughout history conducted itself in a way that is worthy of my respect? Does it currently operate in, in such a way that is worthy of my respect? And the trajectory, as we project out into the future, I hate going off screen, as we project out into the future, the projections, are they respectable? People always want me to give, but they don't tell me what I'm gonna get. So when people come to me, I hear all the time, they talk about division. They say, bro Diallo, when you get to talking about people's religion, people don't play about their religion. Lord, I know, I know people don't play about their religion. I've, I've had, Relationships strained, relationships that I value be greatly strained. Family members, caregivers, mentors, parents, relationships very greatly strained because of my positions on their faith. And so I know there are consequences. And so I understand about the division. And they tell me, one, number one, your positions are divisive. And number two, but they say my positions are divisive and I'm and ineffective. Yeah, that's number two. It don't work. Now, I would like for these people, because the people that tell me it doesn't work. Somebody says, well, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I say, Jesus Christ is your delusion. Jesus Christ is your imagination and your delusion, not your Lord and Savior. And people say, well, that's not going to work. And I'm curious, if like, what are they telling me exactly isn't going to work? Because I hear that a lot. Are they saying that, first of all, what do they imagine my objective is? To get that individual whom I've offended to abandon or reject their beliefs and adopt mine? Or to admit that I'm right and they're wrong? They say, what you're doing is not going to work. And... What I seek to do, my objective is just to articulate the facts. <laughs> That's it. And then let people do what they want with the facts being articulated. So it works every single time. Even if that person says, I'm going to go harder in the paint. I'm going to go to the tabernacle, sit up front, and I'm a Holy Ghost dance, and I'm going to do that little Holy Ghost dance harder. I'm going to go to the monk, mosque, sit up front, wash my feet, and bump my head on the floor even harder. I'm going to take the day off on the Sabbath and sit and mumble and rock to, to Yahweh harder. I'm going to build a bigger shrine and make even greater offerings to the ancestors. 
that does not count as a loss or a failure to me. So when you tell me my methods don't work, my only method is to articulate, to articulate the facts, to stand on the facts, stand on rationality. And once I've done that, my obligation to myself and my obligation to my community has been fulfilled. What they do with it is on them. And then I've never had someone come to me and say, hey, and, it, and when you tell somebody what you're doing is not going to work, it kind of suggests that you agree with my objective. Because why are you going to tell me what I'm going to what I'm doing and how I'm doing it doesn't work? If you don't even agree with the objective, like I don't go to capitalist to some random capitalist and say, hey, you're never going to make a billion dollars doing that shit. Oh, that digital cryptocurrency, that flipping houses. You know, sitting there working on that app, sitting in that musty basement and working away and grinding away at that app, thinking you about to be the next Steve Jobs or Bezos or. What's the other weirdo's name, that weirdo stalker? That everybody hate. Who's the Microsoft nerd? Can't think of his name. Bill Gates. I don't go to these motherfuckers and say, you're never going to make it that way. Now, if I'm going to go to somebody and say, what you're doing is not going to get you to where you're going, it's because I support their effort. I had homies who wanted to rap. Be like, man, listen, you coming at it that way. You ain't going to make it in the industry that way because I want them to make it. You know what I'm saying? I had homies trying to holler at a girl. Like, man, you never going to get that sister's attention coming at it that way. Or the way you acting, your marriage or your relationship won't be sustained. You doing that. Mm -mm. No, I don't do that, player. It's because I want them to achieve what they claim they're trying to achieve so but the people that come to me and say oh the way you approach people and the way you talk about people's religion and the way you engage with the religious and spiritual community it's never going to work but you don't want it to work so if you don't want you genuinely don't want me to succeed so if you think i'm doing something that's not going to succeed you shut the fuck up if i saw somebody attempting to do something and i thought what they were doing was ineffectual and i didn't want them to achieve what they wanted i would just leave them the fuck alone to, to do the unsuccessful thing that doesn't work so i have to assume just based on logic that anybody coming to me saying diallo the way you talk about folks religion the way your approach your disposition your language it's never gonna work I assume that they want me to succeed. And the first thing you, I or anyone else that comes to you and say. What you're doing is not going to work is number one, you say, well. What will work and what's your evidence that it'll work? What will work to stop the ravages of religion? spirituality, cults, and other mass supernatural delusions that plague my race in particular and humanity in general, what would work? What does work? And what's your evidence to back it up to say that that way is more better than my way? With some weirdo <laughs> shit. But I do want to speak to people talking about division that I'm don't support unity. And I know I told y'all, if you were with the bro Diallo show seven years ago, how long we've been doing this shit. If you were, with, I said, I wanted, I didn't want to call this the bro Diallo show. I wanted to call this the broken record show. Cause I was just going to come on the air every week and say, we need a revolution. We need to revolt. We need to organize, dismantle the systems and institutions of white hegemony and capitalism, unify Africa. So I'm going to say the same shit. And so, but I thought, man, ain't nobody. It's kind of a whack name. And another thing that was whack was 
most young people don't like my sons. <laughs> They've never held a record, a cassette, an eight track, CD. They don't know what the fuck that is. So I figured if I wanted to appeal to the millennials or, or Xennials or Gen Z or anybody that was born into the world after me, I probably just saying something, the broken, that's like calling it the the blo broken churn, milk churn or something, dairy, butter churn. Nobody uses butter churns anymore. So if I, if I have a show that references butter churn, most people would be like, what? You know, the squeaky churn. Like, what is that? Anyway, let me say, let me repeat something to y'all. Unity is one of the most abused concepts in the conscious community. Unity. Unity is one of the most bastardized and abused concepts in the black community. I'm sick of it. I get sick. And whenever I get into a gathering, like they say, if more than two people are gathered in my name, I am a monkey. Shit. So if more than three conscious black people are gathered, I am a monkey. Whenever I go in a group of a bunch of black folks huddled together trying to do anything other than shake their ass and have a good time trying to do something serious for and on the behalf of the black race, I just wait how long before somebody says some shit about unity. How long before somebody says some dumb shit about how we not unified and how we need unity and our problem is that we not unified. And it, I can't count. Man, I, I've been going to these things. I've been engaged in the struggle since I was really 12. I've been going to cultural events. But even before I got memory, both of my parents back in the 70s and 60s were Afro, Afro wearing Afro centrics back when we called it Afrocentricity. That's why my name is Diallo. They gave all of us ethnic names. They gave us all culturally significant ethnic names. That's why they called me Diallo and then they called me Kenyatta. I guess when I was born in the 70s, Kenyatta wasn't exposed to be a traitor. So my middle name is Kenyatta and they say uh, a Kenyan will come on there and be like, you have the name Kenyatta. How dare you? I'm like, what do you want from me? We can't just all be named after African heroes. Some of us have to be named after African villains. <laughs> but anyway, I've been around and been engaged in the struggle for a long ass time. And ain't one time I ain't been in a room, huddled in a room, a headquarters, a conference, a cultural meeting, a festival, a black culturally conscious or progressive hip hop, Afrobeat concert. I ain't been in a room of a bunch of worthy African people, beautiful, conscious, cultural black people, and ain't somebody said some fallacious shit about unity. How the fuck can we talk so much about unity and know nothing about it? It's just a good thing that we need and we ain't got. And everything we say about unity is fallacious. Even people accuse me of disrupting the unity. So let me talk about unity one more time. I've never mentioned unity again until I do. I'm never going to say it again until I have to say it. Unity is not inherently good. Our oppression is not rooted in our lack of unity. And our liberation will not come as a result of our unity. No, I don't have a label. But so let me talk about first of all, unity is not a blanket term. There are different types of unity. You have fixed unity. You have transient unity. You have externally imposed unity, unity, externally imposed unity. Right. You have deliberate conscious unification and you have passive default unity. There's all types of unity, right? And the reason why simply black people being unified will not free us simply because it depends on what the blood clot you are unified for. And what are the forces giving you unity? 
And the thing you have to understand that is absolutely most important about unity and the quality of unity is what are the rewards for holding to the unity and what are the consequences for breaking the unity? I hear people talk about we need unity. Everybody agrees. I ask yourself, how do you have something that 90% of the community says we want? Everybody says we want this thing. It's free. It don't cost a thing. Love don't cost a thing. Not only does unity don't cost a thing, unity will has the potential to pay off greatly. How is it that everybody says we should be unified, but we don't have it? You have 50 people in a room that all agree that we need unity, and then they don't unify. And now you never hear someone stand up in a meeting and say, hey, everybody, I'm so happy everybody's here. We poured libations. We played the drums. We called the ancestors in to be with us. We secured the doors. We've all greeted each other. We ate some of the tofu. We've done, we've checked all the cultural Afrocentric woke boxes. And now I just want to say, I offer unity. Where's the unity list? And whatever you got going on, you working on something with the youth, you working on something with, with health care and disparities, you working on housing, you're working on underground armed guerrilla uprising. Whatever you're working on, I offer unity. I offer my time, my talent, and resources to make a positive contribution to whatever you're doing. Don't say we need unity. Say I offer unity. And see where that gets you. But that ain't gonna happen. Nobody listen. And people act like I'm the bad guy. Right? Most black people are at some of the most unified demographics in this country. We all eat most of the same food. We all believe most of the same thing in terms of religion. We all have most of the same conclusions related to politics. The vast majority of us agree on, on, on policy. We all support education. We all want business. We all, we all, we got so much fun. We got unity, but it's squandered. It don't mean shit because it's not revolutionary unity. It's not ideological unity and it's not mobilized and directed targeted unity. But people don't want to acknowledge that the unity is fucked up because if they acknowledge that the unity is fucked up, they have to realize that they're fucked up because they are participants in that unity. So what they do is deny that we have it. We ain't unified as a people. And they point to these little things like we killing each other. I went to this black business and they were rude to me and the waitress was chewing gum and wouldn't make eye contact. We're not unified while our enemies are shooting nukes at each other, while we're looking at white folks. Spend a trillion dollars to murder each other with the most high-tech weapons known to man. Ukraine. We're looking at white folks fight a proxy war against other white folks. We watched just, a, what, a decade and a half ago, Greece collapsed economically. And all the other white people swooped in like vultures and, and picked the, their motherland, the home of Western civilization, picked it clean. We watched the Irish, Northern Irish, beat the shit out of Southern Irish and the British beat the shit out of both of them. <laughs> but we, we're not unified. We watched the sack, we watched the white elites plunge the white masses into an opiate addiction that shortened the overall lifespan of the entire white race in this country, collapsed their reproductive rate. We watch white women in Western Europe hate white men so much that their birth rate has fallen below their death rate, their mortality rate. And they, every major Western country has a steep population to grunt, decline, while African and the West Indies have population booms. But we can get together and they can't. But we imagine because they got money, because we believe the byproduct of unity is money. 
they got money so no matter what no matter how many world wars they fight no matter how many uh times the white elites collapse the economy and steal the houses from the white masses no matter how many times the white farmers have to deal with white corporations dumping toxic chemicals on the white man's farm and all the way no matter how much white folks fuck over other white people we don't recognize it as disunity because at the end of the day on the other side of all that they got a lot of fucking money and we think and we and many people that get up and say we're not unified they really say well because they only understand and can only comprehend things through the capitalist economy saying well i can define black people as doing well or being functional if we got fiat and that's why y'all end up looking up to these scumbag coon race traders as being progressive or successful or leaders because they got fiat but if money was the byproduct of unity white people would be the most impoverished because they have displayed some of the most disunity black stabbing deceptive warlike aggressive predatory behaviors towards each other western europe was a laboratory for atrocities they only were able to come into the new world, come into the dark continent, come into the exotic lands of Asia and commit genocide and colonization because literally the countries that they started, the lands that they founded on were laboratories and incubators for these atrocities because they've been training on each other for a thousand years before they knew we existed, before we discovered them. And we understand this because if you got five young black men line them up and the black man with the gold chains and the black man with the guns and the black man with the nicest car the black man with the most material status things you would look at him and say he's more likely which one of these is likely to be the drug dealer to be the robber to be the pimp you'd be like the black man with all the material shit the black man with the Rolls Royce and the black man driving a Ford and wearing overalls and the black man on the bicycle and the hoodie. Which one of them is the is the biggest villain? You would say, well, that is the black man. And, and, and we look twice. Oh. But if we look at the take the race and the race with all the fucking gold and the race with all the fucking nukes and the aircraft carriers, the race with all the mines, we say that's the good race. That's the race we want to emulate. That's the race we want to be equal to that's the race that is unified so we understand we just don't know we don't know but we understand i don't know it's one of those two things but anyway so we are unified a big chunk of our unity is externally exposed we are racially unified because we are all under oppression and i don't care how much money you got and every now and then this wonderful thing happens called the negro wake-up call where a black person who thinks because of their education, because of their personal wealth, because of their how deeply ingrained and integrated they are with white people, a white spouse, live in a predominantly white neighborhood, work in an industry that's predominantly white. I work in tech. <laughs> I work in weapons. I work in espionage and intelligence agencies. And they fall to some base level white aggression and racism or they try to go beyond what white people designated for them they get up out of the special chair white folks are designated for them and they get their negro wake-up call be like nope what did they say in that book the spook who sat by the door when the spook turned to his homie and said what do they call a nigga in a suit a nigga so anyway We have unity. What we lack is radical ideology, radical analysis, and radical agendas. So when we get that unity, just like when we get all the other shit we claim we need that we have in abundance, we need some money, we need guns. Don't matter. Shit gets squandered. We lost a whole generation fighting for equality integration and access and opportunity now we're about to squander a whole nother generation chasing entrepreneurship and generational wealth so we unified we got unity it don't matter it's 
So I'm saying all that to say, stay out of my face talking about because I tell black people, 90% of the black people across the globe who are engaged in male chauvinist murder cults, male chauvinist murder cults, slave religion, colonizer religion, Christianity, Islam, and the various Judeo Jewish sects and cults, black Hebrews, black Hindus, black Eastern spiritualists, black Buddhists, you're engaged with cultures and religions and gods and, 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 and philosophies pertaining to the divine and reality that are hostile to you and your race. And by your practice and embrace and defense of those things, you are acting as a deliberate traitor to your people. And the only way for you to be those things, and even Garvey and Malcolm X, Garvey was a good African because he was a bad Christian. Malcolm X was a good African because he was really bad at being a Muslim to the point that the Muslims were provoked to, to har harass and take his life. Get mad at me for saying it, but you don't get mad at them for doing it. So we do need unity. We need internal, conscious, deliberate unity. We don't need default unity. Black children, when they are born, there are already classifications and categories and unities that they fix in boxes they're put in with all other black people. That we didn't design those boxes and we don't control those boxes. But we're all in that fucking box. Gil Scott Heron said, we're going to be united by our love for each other or we're going to be united by barbed wire fences. But either way, unity is not something we can have because you can't go no fucking where else. There's no one else who will have you. Ask Kanye. Take your ass to Italy. Take your ass to any other culture. Get your ass way deep into anime. Try to say you're brown. Afro-Latino. Try to find as an African a home outside of and not amongst African people and see how long you sustain. And even if you can't, okay, I'm not going to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put my gender identity or sexuality up front. I, I'm a women's movement or LGBT, gone. Black folks in Chicago, you black person, go on up to Boys Town. <laughs> Head up to Boys Town and see how long you can just go there and be yourself before they call in the police on you. Even myself, I go amongst the vegan community, the animal rights community. Should I love? I stand for animal rights and veganism. And just let me go. Is cutting up and seasoning the tofu and being a member of that predominantly white food co-op. I was a member of, a, of, of the Park Soap Food Co-op with all these hippie patchouli oil stench in the air, bok choy and lemongrass scent wafting through all these Birkenstocks and hemp, all these braided bracelets, All these greetings, and then they come to find out they did an observation and found out that the co-op members who were black were stopped and, and 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 monitored more than the whites, even though they found that the whites stole from the co-op at equal or greater levels than the non-whites, and they were more likely to get away with stealing because wasn't nobody watching. So I'd be like, well, I'm not like the rest of these Negroes. I don't eat chitterlings. I, 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 I wouldn't chain my dog in the yard. I am an animal rights vegan colored folk. So I'm just going to use my, my veganism as, as a, and build a community around that. Nope. They send you right back to the black folks. So we are unified as fuck. But we need conscious, deliberate, radical, revolutionary unity. All of the unities, you can take them or leave them. You can take them or you leave them. And let me tell y'all something else. Stop being afraid of division. All y'all come to me and be like, I'm being divisive. I know. Y'all think y'all, y'all, I know. 
y'all can divest from me y'all can uninvite me y'all can do all that because i'm not afraid of division because in a lot of positions especially in conscious and revolutionary struggles division is a necessity you got to have a line in the sand i don't root for every fucking body black there are significant individuals and significant populations of black people i hope fail at their goals and objectives because their goals and objective even though they're black contradict my goals and objective they are hostile or subversive to my goals and objectives but black people because we've been fed a steady diet of anti-black propaganda we think that we have to demonstrate and prove our humanity to the inhumane oppressors so we don't like people to see us fighting each other and be divided and again we're trying to prove and demonstrate our capacity to get along with each other to a people who already fought two global war world wars against each other it's fucking crazy so i'm not afraid for people to be like yeah i am divided there are black individuals and black organizations and black agendas and programs that i oppose I'm not rooting for everything or everybody black. There is a very specific manifestation of blackness that I align with and resonate with. And there are several branching components of that particular main stem that I align with and support. Anything outside of that, anything that resonates with our enemies, anything that validates or supports our enemies, anything that compounds our oppression, I'm against that shit too, even if it's black as fuck. Even if it comes from the hood or even if it comes from the heart of the motherland, I don't give a fuck if the shit is, is compounding our oppression. I don't care if it's an old tradition that predates colonialism. Don't bring it to me because that's a fallacy. I told you I gave a whole discussion on the tyranny of tradition. If you're doing anything because it's tradition, if you're doing anything because it was always done, stop doing that shit. If that's your only validation and your only fucking support for doing that shit. I don't get down like that. Nothing is above critique. Nothing is above examination. Nothing is above expulsion, reworking, or radicalizing. I love our African antiquity. I love to read about the accomplishments of our people, pre-colonial. And I don't just, cause y'all get confused. Y'all think pre-colonial is predate the white man. You gotta go pre-colonial is pre-Arab, pre-Islamic invasion, pre-Greek and Roman invasion. It didn't just start with Queen Elizabeth, King Charles, African colonization been and, and African incursions been going on long before that. Y'all better get up on Chancellor Williams. That man didn't go bankrupt and go blind to do this research to self fund that research for nothing. Go learn about the first and second cataract. I love that era, but don't just fucking come and expect me. It's an old thing we used to say in Kansas City called Jeffin. Don't expect me to just be like, oh, the ancient Egyptians. I got a scale model period. Let me show you. My wife got this for me for my birthday a few years ago. You might not be able to see it too, but look at that. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Hang on. Let me see. Look at this. Wow. Tilt it down. Look at it. Nice things. I have nice things. Do you have nice things in your life? Anyway, I love ant African antiquity. I am in awe of the contributions and accomplishments of my African ancestors. But don't come tell me to put on an Egyptian headdress and walk around with a brass onk. Because I still want to say, well, I don't know. I got questions about the monarchy and certain practices and certain priorities and distribution. Don't come tell me about Mansa Musa, the richest man who ever lived. Man, fuck Mansa Musa and his hodge. Fuck that shit. Let me recenter myself. Let me realign my chakras. All I'm saying is, 
especially when you come under oppression and you've been under generations of oppression, everything must be re-examined. Not everything must be rejected. Not everything must be reworked, but everything must be examined, even the good shit. In fact, the shit you embrace and you care about the most, you should be most critical of. I know this, that y'all don't pay no attention to me. Y'all don't, y'all don't hear me though. Y'all don't pay attention, but if you really listen and follow me, I go hardest on those who claim to be Pan-Africans. I'm most critical of the vegan and vegetarian and health gurus. The shit that I believe in, the shit that I embrace and the things that I advocate, I target that. But y'all just let it wash over you. Even brothers, people get mad. You always going in on the brothers. I am a brother. I am of the brothers. So yes, I do probably go harder and have a more even more critical eye of black men than 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 the sisters or even white men because that's that, that's my house. What the fuck? Y'all think I'm gonna walk through my home and not look in the crevices? I'm like, how you go? How I'm gonna go out in the streets and look at the filth and look at the vermin, look at the cracks? And the seepages, and I go out into the world and look at that shit. But I come home and turn. Oh, I don't want to say nothing about the house. Might cause conflict. Might cause division. Shit is weird. So I say division is a necessity. And as we progress along the revolutionary path, and the division should be rooted in on critical analysis, data. What can be demonstrated? What can be articulated? So it ain't about, oh, I feel bad. I don't like that shit. There's a lot of shit I kick it with I don't really like. And there's a lot of things. There's a, so many reindeer games I'd love to play. There's so many things that I'd love to just be able to settle into comfortably. But I can't. Can't bring myself to do it. So many things. And shit that I was really good at. Shit I used to enjoy that I just can't do anymore. I had to divide. I had to separate myself. Because I'm not afraid of division. Any struggle that is a fearful of internal division, that is so fearful of, of, of internal conflict or internal division, it will always be a vulnerable movement because it will be a movement that is plagued by traitors, contradictions, and dysfunction. We're going to be unified. I don't care. You're part of a, a, a reactionary, sexist, patriarchal uh, group. Well, you black, come on in. You are a gun-wielding, uh, uh, irresponsible, uh, uh, militant, highly volatile group. But you black, come on in. You're some type of, of, of neo-cult, uh, uh, re religious sex cult that's exploiting the sisters. But you black, come on. Everybody, if it's black, we're going to be together. We're going to be unified. We're not going to let them see us fight. We're not going to air our dirty laundry. And that movement... And we looking out towards the oppressors, towards the colonizers, towards the capitalists, towards the parasites. Why everybody we've just locked arms with, 90% of them people are preying on and abusing the other 10%. So draw a line in the fucking sand. Who doesn't do that? Go read the history of the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. Prior, during chattel slavery, there's a book without sanctuary. And I'm not saying we should emulate or imitate these people. I'm not saying we should imitate or emulate these people. Right? I'm just saying there are certain universal facts. There are certain universalities. Man, the website's dead. God damn. They made a movie? Huh. I never knew. Anyway, there are certain universality. Meaning that if you want to construct a building, I don't care if that building is a homeless shelter. I don't care if that building is a is a is a is a tabernacle or a brothel. I don't care if that building is a prison 
or Revolutionary War soldier barracks. There are certain fundamental principles that you have to follow when you're constructing that building. You cannot say, well, this will be a socialist building. It will not be something that is privately owned. This is a building that will be communally owned. This will be a building not for the generation of profit, but a building that is erected for the sustaining and servicing the community. Right? There are certain units, certain things you can do. Say, hey, we're going to put a lot of windows in this building because we want natural light. We're going to put solar panels on this building. We're not going to even put locks on the doors. We want all people to have access anytime they need. We're going to use sustainable practices. We're going to put room for a garden and a compost bin. There's a lot of things you can do, but certain things you can't do, like foundation, certain building codes. You got to have a proper foundation. You got to use the proper materials. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can't build a house out of chocolate. So you're going to determine wood, stone, natural brick. Or natural slate, make the slate out of natural adobe. There are certain fundamental principles you have to follow. It's the same thing with organization. A lot of the principles to organize for liberation apply to organizing for revolution. Right? So anyway, I was talking about, well, I went to the website, but the website is pretty much dead. Jeez. I ate the free cheese. So anyway, without sanctuary, I was going to share it, but you can go to the website. There is still something there, but it's not. A lot of the links are dead. Sorry. It ain't my fault. Anyway, this is the without sanctuary. But in this book, in the beginning of the book, the intro of the book, see that link is dead. Can't get the book anymore. Anyway, in the beginning of this book, and it said they had a movie, which blows my mind. I never knew there was a... But anyway, in the beginning of this book, they said the primary victims of lynching were white men. Were white men. With the whole mob hunting down a victim, uh, terrorizing the victim, mutilating their genitals putting their bodies on display, killing them in the most painful and graphic way possible. It was primarily white men. African men did not become the primary target for, 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 uh, for uh, lynching till post-Reconstruction America. So their own were, were not exempt. So I'm just saying, we think a lot of shit that is unique to us or uniquely for us, it ain't. And this is a graphic way to push this, this point home and to drive this point home. But white folks says, listen, we have a mission here. We're going to colonize this land. We're going to expand across this land as rapidly as possible. We're going to displace the native population. And as we displace the native population, the arable land that can be cultivated, we will work that land with slave labor brought from the African continent. And then as we progress and we get to a certain stage and they fought the French, they fought the Spanish, they fought the British, and then they turn around and made allegiances with the Spanish against the French or the British and made allegiances with the British against the Spanish. But their objective remained the same. And the white people who weren't with the slavery, who weren't with the genocide, who weren't with the colonization, who weren't with the expansion, were deemed traitors. They were deemed traitors. And they were dealt with in some of the hearts. Some of them were publicly ridiculed. Even now, white folks run around talking about, oh, you bleeding heart liberal, you woke. So white people with their insidious, wicked agenda understand that people who come from our race have to toe the line. 
And the degree, and depending on what degree you toe that line or what degree you show opposition to that line, you shall be dealt with. In the, uh, there was a, this really silly practice of having white people during the uh, uprising between the, it's so many atrocities, but the Trayvon Martin atrocity up to the George Floyd atrocity and the various protests, uprisings and rebellions in that space, people started returning to this stupid thing that white people in order to be allies should lock arms around blacks. And if you want to go search some of this pitiful shit, you'll find white uh, black people standing in protest and then white people standing around white folks standing around in a circle around those black folks standing around in a semicircle around those black folks because their whiteness their white privilege would protect these black people and so the police or the national guard or the sheriff county sheriffs or just hostile white mobs would see another white flesh and be like oh there's a white person in front of that black person and because i'm white and white folks we're unified i'm not gonna split the head of that other white person and so i'm not willing to harm this precious white flower in order to get to that black person and what did we see <laughs> what did we see the white people were mowing down them white folks there was in 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 the uh, the the in in um the the unite the right march and a white woman died there several white people were injured because a white dude was like uh these black folks got a counter protest against our neo-nazi struggle and he hit the gas and ram killed a white woman What's those two white boys at the BLA uh, rebellion? And that white kid came with the AR-15, who's a national hero now. And he was fighting and walking and two white boys went and they shot that white boy down. He shot three white dudes at a Black Lives Matter uprising. He went to a Black Lives Matter rebellion and shot three white folks. There was some white, blonde haired, blue eyed white girl in Israel from America. She got on a plane, flew to Israel and says, I'm going to go to and stand in front of Palestinian homes and stop the trucks from coming. And they ran her ass over and they packed her up in a pill box and mailed her back to the United States so her parents could bury her. White folks is like, listen, we have an agenda and I don't care if you are the Aryan, Ar Aryanist Aryan to ever Aryan, bluest eyes and the blondest hair and the most translucent skin the thinnest lips and the flattest behind we don't give a fuck if you don't toe the line that's your ass and that's the thing we don't understand we talk about COINTELPRO nobody really understands COINTELPRO we think COINTELPRO started with the Black Panthers like I said most of the atrocities most of the horrible shit they did to us they practiced on themselves before Almost everything you can name, from lynching to sy systematic rape to even eugenics and their various pseudoscientific philosophies about people being lower breeding stock, about the inferiority and lack of intelligence. They were using phrenology and shit like that on, on, on the Irish and talking about Irish were primates and monkeys before they started that shit with us. Y'all don't hear me though. So every time black people come to me to talk to me about unity and division and our various hangs up around unity and division, I'm like, y'all don't know shit about unity or division, especially as it relates to revolutionary liberatory politics and ideology and struggle. But I'm the bad guy. So continue not to invite me to the reindeer games. Continue to, to see me as persona non gratis. I, I, I don't get those speaking engagements. I don't get the invites and I'm fine with that. I will sit here behind this microphone, this broken microphone stand. It's still, hey, it still holds the mic. This shit just And this little slightly askew camera talk to myself 
because the only way to say, sway me is to demonstrate how my analysis is off. And I don't think that is a defeat. Then you can't defeat me. You can't beat me because I'm willing to change my position and refine my analysis. I'm willing to be demonstrate or proven wrong and change my position to the right one. So I'm, I can't be outdone. <laughs> I found the formula for never losing, at least intellectually and ideologically. So we need to stop being manipulated by unity and manipulated by division. We need to stop with all the fallacies and delusions we have around black unity and black division. We have to be willing to be divided. We have to be willing to remove ourselves or we have to be willing to expel others. We have to be willing to have a very real and strict system of accountability. We have to be able to acknowledge that some people we like have done harm for us, to us as a people. Some people we admire have done harm to us. Some individuals who we, we view as heroes and some organizations we view as taking a stand. In our liberation struggle, in order to create this new world, there is as much internal work to do as there is external work. You have to acknowledge that the world many of the people fighting to free us want to create is just as toxic and oppressive and hierarchical as the one they claim they want to free us from. Stop getting mad at me for calling it out. Get mad at me for being incorrect, for being skewed, even come at me for my biases. I acknowledge my biases. You can even challenge my opinions. I always say, I try to be clear when it's time to put on the tinfoil hat and I'm, I'm making assertions that I can't fully back up. I say, put on your tinfoil hat because I'm about to go into the arena of the conspiracy. I will acknowledge it. And I swear, for oh God, I wish everything I sat here and said, I wish 90% of it was wrong. I wish I was wrong about most of the shit I said. And I wish most of the shit I, I talk about didn't have to be spoken on. Anyway, let's move on to the topic. I don't know why I do this. When I want to talk about something, I try to get ahead of the responses. Because I, I, I say something and then I got to deal with weeks and sometimes months worth of these goddamn irrational responses. Anyway, this is Brody Allo Broadcast. Like, share, subscribe, share with your friends, enemy, allies, homies, lovers, and haters. You can support the Bro Diallo Show in various ways. You can become a Patreon supporter. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. Bless y'all hearts. If there was a God, I really wish he would send y'all some blessings. Um, I am listener supported exclusively. If you come to the Bro Diallo page and find me across socials, you won't see any sponsorships, advertisements, no little commercial breaks on YouTube. You have to skip. I am for by of the people. This show is a product of the community, sustained and supported by the community, and will disappear if the community deems it no longer worthy of support. Straight up. Anyway. I still appreciate y'all, and I'm going to be here as long as y'all here. So let's talk about what brought me to speak about uh, saving the Savior. Because I see black people fighting harder for fucking Jesus. We fight hard. We saving our Savior. All my life, I, told, I was told Jesus was a Savior. And all I ever seen in my whole fucking life is black people saving Jesus. Black people fighting and speaking for Jesus. And I ain't seen Jesus speak up, stand up, or fight for us near once. There were two times in my life where I was a true believer. And I truly got on my knees and asked God for help. Two times. First time, I'm not embarrassed to say I was a victim. Second time, I'm very embarrassed. And I don't think I've told anybody besides my wife this story. First time, I was a true believer. I was raised in the church. To celebrate Christmas. My father was a Muslim, so I go when my father would show up very infrequently. Can count on one hand the few times my father came and got me and roamed around. 
I mean, some of it wasn't his fault in his time when he was incarcerated. What was really funny, my dad, when I was born, he was incarcerated. He wasn't even there to sign a birth certificate. He was locked up. And I remember being woken up out of the bed one time. And my grandmother woke me up and said, come up front. Your dad's here. And that's the first time I remember meeting my father. And he had just got out of jail. And he was there with the guy who picked him up from jail. And he's like, oh, there's my boy. Look how big you got. I ain't seen you in a while. And he's like, I'm going to be there. I'll be, be there. And so this is a cycle. I'm old. My father's old. This is, this is old news. But when he was locked up, he'd write me long letters. And he'd stay engaged and ask me about what I'm doing. And I was the only kid of his who wrote him back. At least that's what he said. He could be lying about that. But my oldest brother, uh, Lil Duron, Pomona Crip, uh, my second oldest brother, my 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 older sister, and my other sister. Some of us got the same mama. One of us got the same mama. The rest of us all got different mamas. Same dad. But anyway, he said I wrote him back. So I he'd show up. So anyway, I was raised. Methodist when I was at my great grandma's house. My mother had me when she was really young. My dad had me. With, so I know my great grandparents. I know my grandparents. Uh, so anyway, I was in the Methodist church when I was at Grandma Bowie's house. And when I was at Grandma Sonetta's house, I went to the Baptist church. When I was with my mother, she used to go to the Holy Roller, a non-denominational church. But they first churches, they had the, 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 the drum sets and the electric guitars. And she was the Holy Ghost snake handler. Like where they really just throw themselves on the floor and, and get conniptions foaming at the mouth. Foolishness. And you can't use this word anymore, but I'm going to go out on a limb. But Beyonce, they would get spastic in that church clinically. Now, I'm not using it as I mean. And so that was so I was and, and if you know anything about Methodist, very subdued, you know anything about Baptist and and, and, and all these various groups. I just ran the full gauntlet of black Christianity. And then my dad would come and get me and take me to the mass jet. And I always really, because these guys were very articulate. They were all had very, very good posture. And the, the Muslim men conducted themselves and interacted with each other much different than the Christian elders and the deacons. And I would just eat bean pies and fish sandwiches. And I kind of thinking, I'm going to ride this Christian shit out because the Muslims, they over here fasting and they don't have Christmas. That's whack. So I thought to myself, I do this Christian shit. I do this Christian shit until I get, become an adult. And so I can get my presents and I can get my, uh, and I don't have to fast and all that weird shit. And then when I become a man and I'm ready to have a family, now I can have a woman all wrapped up and, and on lock. And I can have multiple women even. And I'm going to have all the fish sandwiches and bean pies I could have. But, you know, the plans of, an, of a young adolescent never tend to play out. So anyway, at that time, around that time, uh, my mother, struggling with mental health issues and addiction issues, lost custody of us. And my grandmother, of course, like every hood, oh, man, there needs to be a hood grandma day, not just a grandmother's day. Because you grandmothers who could pick up like, I'm a grandparent now. But I tell you what, I pick up my granddaughter and jiggle her around and sing little songs with her. And maybe if I feel like it, give her a bottle. Maybe if I feel like it, put on little cute outfits. And when I'm done, I call my son, I call his girl, and I'll be like, come get it. Come get us. Come come get this. It's, I'm done. I've, I'm, I've, I've had my bring. Present the child. You know, that's how I do Present the child. Oh, very well. Oh, she's growing. She's quite robust. Okay, take her away. So I'm that kind of grandparent. I ain't suffering. I ain't staying up all night. But my hood grandparents, you know, like my sons with their maternal grandmother, it's all gravy, all good food, all fun and game. Anyway. My grandmother, there needs to be a hood grandma, especially from the 80s, from the crack era hood grandma holiday. Can you, how did y'all get Juneteenth on the books? What did y'all do? How much money I got to send old uh, genocide Jim Crow Joe to get? There should be a crack epidemic grandmother's day. The grandmothers during the crack epidemics was held us down. We wouldn't be here. 
they held it down. I mean, I think the CIA, when they was plotting and working with these gangs, these black gang, Uncle Tom sellout gangs, Rick Ross to biochemical warfare against our community, they didn't count on black grandmas. Shout out to black grandmas of the crack epidemic era and shout out to everybody that was raised by their grandmas. Anyway, my grandmother took me in. A woman who never lied to me. He looked me in my face with all sincerity and says, listen, two things you got to do. You got to live your life according to what God would have you live your life and pray to God to save your mother. So if you pray to God to get your mother's psychology and addiction together, and if you then after you pray and ask God to save your mother, you have to conduct yourself as a good Christian child. And if you do those two things, God will bring your mother out of the, 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 that, that, that addiction demon. And I'm like, here's a woman who never steered me wrong, who only showed concern. She wanted to make sure my neck was clean. My ears was clean. She wanted to make sure I ate till I was full. She used to say one of my favorite things to do is watch me eat. Cause I was men. I was scrawny. And if you know my people, if you know the buoys, if you in Kansas City, you know, the buoys and the Jeffersons. They big people. They all over six feet. They all over 300 something pounds. They all big dudes. And so here I am looking the runt of the litter. So she used to feed me good, house and shelter me and never steer me wrong. Right. So I'm like, why would I accept? So anyway, I sincerely fucking prayed. I went down to to uh, what's the name of that fucking church? Covenant Missionary Baptist Church. And I went down there and confessed my sins said I was born sinner and I am a sinful man and I and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and I took and I got baptized I took the baptismal and the new members class I became I joined the choir I became an usher what else did I I was just in the church I was a fucking church boy and I remember shout out rest in peace to pony boy rest in peace to Dion he was like one of the coolest guys in the neighborhood I used to think Dion he could fucking break dance he could box Dion would BP. That's why he ain't here with us now. Because he, he, you know, he was he was still throwing hands when dudes started going to the fucking guns. And some some chump that he had had had, had uh you know pieced up real good came back on him and shot him. But anyway, shout out to Dion. And I remember I thought Dion was one of the coolest guys in the he was definitely East Hills Village housing projects, coolest cat there. Had the back in the day, longest Jerry Curl, always come up with the flyest gear. And I was sitting on the church van and I looked out the church van. And Dion was pointing at me laughing. And I'm like, damn. And I'm like, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to look like a lame, a buster, a mark in front of the guy I think is one of the coolest guys from my hood. I'm willing to do it because I'm on a mission to save my mother. And I'm like 12 years old, praying, not thinking. And every time I think, you know, I'm. 12, 13 years old, if you've ever been in the, 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 the cesspool and the internet didn't exist, I don't know how we got so dirty. I can't imagine. You know, I, I give the internet era young people a lot of leeway. I'm very sympathetic because I can't imagine the internet around 87, 88. Oh, Lord of mercy. But anyway, I think dirty thoughts about the little girls running around the neighborhood. Little girls I had a crush on, I'm not going to name them because they still out here. And you know, social media, somebody might come up on it. But anyway, little, I started having little crushes, but I kept my heart and my mind pure. When those sinful thoughts came, I asked God to forgive me and to remove those thoughts at the same time I asked him. And I really went into that shit for like more than a year, man. And, I, and eventually it hit me like, this is some bullshit. I'm not even sure. It was a combination of things. That's the one time I was a true believer. And then another time is goofy as fuck. I was homesick. I had just graduated high school. I had a wild summer. Shout out to Rip the Crip. Shout out to uh, Sage Egosh. Shout out to everybody that made the summer of 92 the wildest summer in Kansas City history for me. And I went off to college. And I was taking these classes, right? I was taking human anatomy and physiology i was taking cellular biology and cellular anatomy i was taking pathology one 
and I was starting to go into clinicals. So I'm studying and looking at the body and I'm, and, and there's this thing called student itis. If you know anybody who's went into healthcare, whether physician, a nurse, or allied health professional, respiratory therapist, ask anybody who worked in healthcare. There's this thing called, uh, there's this thing called studentitis, where you're like, I'm dying. I have every fucking, I have metastatic cancer. You know, I have colorectal cancer. I have uh, 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 atrial fibrillation. You know, you you start to study these disease and these symptoms and then you go into a clinic because me, I had never been to a funeral at that time. I had never been around a dead body. And then they throw you onto the clinical floors and you see people dying. You see open gaping wounds. You see femur bones protruding out of people's flesh. And I was at, if you know, New Yorkers, Kings County Hospital. 92, 93, Kings County Hospital. Bellevue Hospital, Downstate, Memorial. Those were the places I was in clinicals in that level one trauma center. So I thought I was fucking dying. And one day, I swear, I was at my aunt's house and I was just sitting there studying. And I was looking at my, uh, I think I still had that textbook, my human diseases book. And I was looking at the chapter on malignancy. And I was looking at these 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 lymph nodes and and these organs that were studded with cancer, malignant cancer. And I said, Jesus, I'm fucking dying. And for months, and I have a homeboy who went into the Asar Set Society and the Fahami Temple and, and spirituality. He really got into astrology, and he said that I was a Scorpio under a fire sign under a water moon or some shit and he said that i had a fixation and obsession with death so anyway i'm sitting there studying making damn good grades better grades than i ever made in high school like number three in the class so i'm sitting there studying looking at these images of disease looking at these radiographs of 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 of, of bloated colons and shit i'm like i'm fucking dying so I stopped. It's like 1992. I hadn't been to church. I stopped going to church at like 13, 14. And I was what? 18, 19, like four years later, I was like 18 years old. And I dropped everything. I pushed the books away. I got up from the desk and I got down on my knees and I prayed. And I'm like, I'm dying. So let me just, let me say, God, I know you, I'm dying. I know I got one or two or three of these diseases i don't even know how i got born because we were also looking at all these mutilated and deformed congenital diseases we were looking at these various fetuses and babies and infants at certain forms of development and they didn't have craniums and they didn't have limbs and i was just anyway i was overwhelmed and they told us about it during orientation downstate state university of new york the, the 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 program administrator set us all down and told us about student itis and he's like you're going to get to the point where you're going to be overwhelmed with all the disease the sickness some of you will make it through some of you sadistic bastards will enjoy every minute of it and every single one of you are going to get to the point where you're like you're going to die or you're dying or you're going to find the disease or you're going to have a patient that comes in like we had one guy that was in a minor fender bender and he had dizziness and uh he's just a minor fender bender and we and i did his cranial x-rays and when i did his cranial x-rays i thought there was something wrong with the film this is back before digital radiography so i bring it out i put it through the fixer and i i hang it up and they used to have and and then you had to dry or sometimes to dry it, the machine would have a dryer but anyway i pull up I'm like some this film is muddled and so I take it to uh, the clinical instructor and he snatches it from me like, did you take this? I'm like, yeah, I took it. So he runs it into the radiologist and the radiologist runs out and then he runs to get the 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 uh, oncologist. And they, everybody's running around with this film I took. And I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, it comes back to dude had multiple brain tumors. The dude's brain was pocked full of holes in each one of those white because it was black mostly black and all these dense white spots like two dozen of them all those were metastatic tumors dude was completely asymptomatic that shit shook me 
because he walked in there like I walked in there, was talking to me like I was talking to him. So anyway, I prayed to God. I didn't even pray for God to save me. I just said, God, thine will be done. And if this is my time to go, I had so much I wanted to live for. I didn't have no children. I ain't never had a long-term relationship because none of the girls from Bishop Hogan would date. I didn't have no girlfriend. I ain't lived no kind of life. But if you want to take me, then do your will be done, goddammit. And so those are the one, the two times in my life where I was really, one was basically one night. I got up the next morning and was embarrassed of myself. So that was one night of that. I'm like, I had a conversation with God. And that other time where I had a more than a year long year of living religiously living because I got a younger brother that's been doing that his whole life. I got a younger brother who gave his life to Christ when he was like eight or nine years old and he never strayed from the path to this day. He's like the anti Diallo. Is that a goddamn. Oh, no, this is bubbles. I thought a little gnat flew in my teeth. Anyway. So those are the only the two only two times I ever could say that I was a true believer. Like you couldn't tell me shit. Like those two times. All the other times I was just like, yeah, you got to do this. So my grandma, I got to go to church to keep my grandma off my back. You know, I'm just going along to get along. But those are the only two times. So I'm not alien to religious belief. I'm not, it's not alien to me. Being a person of faith, a sincere believer or practicing, even my dad would always say to me, he was very confused about my position because he said, you know, you make a great Muslim. You conduct yourself like a Muslim. You're, 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 you're rather disciplined, you know, in your diet and your disposition, your, your approach to things. He's like, you're, you're a natural Muslim. You know, if you just take these other few steps, you you would make just, I don't understand. Like, my other two brothers, them were some wild dudes. They some wild cats. They used to look at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, how can you be from the same line as us? I was like an embarrassment. I was a family embarrassment. But the shit they were embarrassed about from me is the kind of shit, you know, normal people would be proud of. Like, you know, you're doing well in school and you got all these activities. You're doing all this work in the community. They was like, you making us look weak. You know? He's like, man, you know, you we got a late. But anyway. So, all I'm saying is, I haven't always been at the position. I believed and I prayed and I accepted and tried to live according to. And I think it was horrendous. I think it was, I would say, abusive. I would say, to be generous, I would say it's irresponsible to indoctrinate children. Because they have this thing called positive feedback loops. And a positive feedback loop is saying, well, humans are causing the earth to warm. But we've crossed the threshold where a human created climate change is now being taken over by natural climate change. So humans burning fossil fuels and emitting, creating an agricultural system that emits methane, high levels of methane. But now because the earth has reached a certain ecological breaking point, the methane vents and the oceanic warming, now the earth is now doing to itself what we used to do to it. So even if all human beings today stop with our carbon emissions, there would still be global warming because the earth, the planet's oceans have warmed to the point where the carbon sink has now become a carbon source and the methane vents because of the melting permafrost is emitting high rates of, of methane. You get me? It's a positive feedback loop. Like you ever like had one of them rev up cars and you'd have to rev it up or rev it up or pull the rip card and, zoom, 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 and then it gets to the point where you just got to put it down and it goes without you touching it. That's where we are. It used to be Muslims and Christians would invade our communities, invade our villages, and they tell us they cut our tongues out. They would burn our communities. They would put sabers to our throats and muskets to our heads and say, 
This is your new God. And after generations of that, and I know motherfuckers love to talk about Senegal. And how Senegal came to Islam. It wasn't violence. And I tell them all the time. Senegal was not violently converted to Islam because it was a logistics thing. But I digress. I can't even get into that because I'm supposed to be talking about Jesus. Because Islam doesn't have a savior. Jesus is not. Jesus is a prophet. So let, I'm not even going to get into that. All I'm saying is a people who were violently or through deception, manipulation, through torment. Like we'll feed the Christian children. We, we, we come into your community. We come into your uh, village. We come into your nation. We take over your economy. We take over your resources. We push you to the brink of starvation. And then we send in our missionaries to open up monasteries and, and temples and churches and say, well, if you want to eat, just come eat. But you're going to pray over your food first. You're going to thank Jesus for your food and your blessings. You're going to have to convert. Your children can come to our schools and get an education to, in order to navigate this new economy and this new world. But it's a Christian school. It's a missionary school. Native Americans. Africans. Even parts of, of, of Asia. You either accept our God or you don't get our resources. So they would do violent conversion. They would uh, manipulate our conversion through resource. But after so many generations and so many centuries, now the Christian conversion is in a what is called a positive feedback loop. Now, positive doesn't mean good. It's positive like HIV positive positive for syphilis so when you say positive we tend to associate that word positive with something good but the word positive simply denotes something that is advancing and continuing forward as opposed to going backwards so a negative feedback loop would be something that ceased or reverse the process a positive feedback loop is something that sustains or advances a process. So the popes, the bishops, the missionaries, the conquistadors, the colonial officers, they no longer have to go to Africa or go to south side of Chicago and tell us of the light of Christ. To tell us that we come from a heathen, savage, godless people. Because there is a positive feedback loose of Christian indoctrination in the black community. Where we Christianize each other. And they used to set up temples and churches behind military barracks. When you look at the slave castles, Almina, when you look at and when you go to South America, when you go to Brazil and you look at the old fortresses that the conquistadors, when you go and look to the old the Alamo or you go to these old Western forts that they've preserved in history, the church had to be behind the walls. The missionary was protected by the soldiers. So the, the, the soldiers, the invaders, would go out and, and kill off the, the villagers, kill off the adults, and then they'd bring back the children and hand them over to the missionaries. For indoctrination. They don't have to do that shit anymore. In fact. In 2024. Adherence to Christian faith. Adherence to Christian dogma. The spread of the gospel and the good news. Africans have surpassed Europeans. As Western European nations become more and more secular and more European white people could be say they are inactive or non-believers, the faith in the church is being sustained and held up by Africans. Even here in the United States, where I think white Americans in the United States are some of the most backwards, regressive Christian population in the world. Even here, black church attendance surpasses white church attendance per capita. 
So we are now in a theocratic positive feedback loop where if no other white person, no other white institution ever said we're going to impose our dis we're going to impose our theology, our philosophy, our dogma, our scriptures. We're no longer going to force or push our belief systems on our colonial subjects, on our slaves, on our victims. We're going to stop that. In fact, we're going to establish secular governments. We're going to establish secular standards and practices. We're going to establish secular businesses and corporations. Even if no other white person ever looked at another African and says, have you heard the good news? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? We would still be Christianized because we're in a positive feedback loop where the person who's indoctrinating you in the alien belief system is your own, your grandma, your mama, your uncle, your cousin. China, what's her name? Black China. You can be Christianized by reform strippers. There's this other sister who used to be a uh, natural health and wellness influencer, and now she's a Bible thumper. This is a catastrophe that no other people would do. I promise you, if you went to the Islamic world and the Islamic leaders or Islamic parents said, you know, my child is worshiping the Arisha. My child is following the comedic, comedic system of cultivation, even though they claim they're the Egyptians and everything about Egyptian faith and spirituality, they absolutely say is haram and they reject. And so you created a culture and then rejected it the day after. That's crazy. But I digress. I'm going to try to stop talking about Islam, but most of what I say applies to Islam. Most of the atrocities I speak on, Islam has done it as much, if not worse. But in the white world, Ifa, Yoruba, comedic systems of worship, Dogon spirituality. If white parents walked into a room and saw their children had erected an ancestral shrine and making offerings, they would declare a state of emergency. They would declare a state of emergency. Even as we speak, the Chinese communist government is fighting to purge Christianity and Islam from its borders. And some of y'all be like, oh, this is terrible. How dare they? But how did Christianity come into their borders? <laughs> how did these faiths come in? And we believe something that came to you through warfare and conquest can be expelled peacefully or be embraced peacefully. I know y'all mad at Noam Chomsky, but when you're right, you're right. Noam Chomsky spoke about if you look at the difference between colonized and those who didn't got, get colonized. You do more to look at the cultural victories and accepting the cultural colonization than you would to do to look at the military conquest. There are people they defeated militarily, but they couldn't of the hearts and minds. Japan hasn't been colonized and Japan went toe to toe with the big boys. But Japan had a strict policy. The Shinto faith was like missionaries on our soil will be decapitated. And some of y'all might think, wow, you know, that's crazy. You know, you got somebody that's just there to tell you about their faith and you're going to cut their head off. But guess what the missionaries did? Non-believers will be decapitated. These aren't religions of peace. I don't give a fuck how many times they say it. These motherfuckers cut a swath, a bloody swath across continents. They cut bloody swaths across continents and y'all will sit here and say, this is a religion of peace. Man. Say all that to say. Christianity and African people. African people on our continent 
African people of the diaspora, African Americans, Afro Caribbeans, Afro Latinos, anywhere you find African Africans in Nova Scotia and Brixton. We are in a positive, even the most revolutionary place outside of Africa, the home of African rebellion and resistance, Haiti is a cesspool of Christian indoctrination. And we're and the fact that we're so cool with this. I know black people who are well aware of the history and impact of religion and still say, we got to respect it. I don't know where to go. But it's a positive feedback. And two things that got me thinking about this, two folks, two things. Uh, one is an artist by the name of Little Nas X. And one is a movie called The Book of Clarence. Now, I'm not a fan of Little Nas X. I think he's wiggity wiggity whack. But it could just be my old brain and my old ears. Uh, so there's a movie came out this year. And uh, Jay-Z's... Uh, production company it's like one of the first major movies that jay-z's production company put out uh, legendary entertainment and uh so jay-z's a, a a producer of this film and i don't know what well, he's not the sole producer but they they keep us i think they were thinking to themselves well we put jay-z's up there just like they put him up there we think he's running the nfl <laughs> and he's running the multi motion picture industry uh but anyway um legendary pictures put this out um and Lil Nas X we all know Lil Nas X the pop star I don't have much respect for Lil Nas X because he said that he used to hate capitalism until he became a millionaire and I think if he said it in jest it could be funny but because he said it with all sincerity, I appreciate the honesty, but I think the conclusion is, is shitty. So anyway, so there's the book of Clarence. Let's start with Lil Nas X. Uh, Lil Nas X came up with this video called J. Christ. Called J. Christ. And in it, Blasphemy, pure blasphemy. That's one thing I respect. Him. I want to be. In I'm not this gonna play it because I don't want a copyright strike. I ain't even gonna show that shit. But Lil Nas X comes up with this um, J Christ thing, and then after he put that out, and it's a movie with all this religious iconography and all this queerness and more crucifixes and him on a crucifix and him playing basketball against the devil. Just really, just getting going. Just wild. And I really kind of don't want to, because I'm sick of getting copyright striked. And they taking down my videos. I'll just show a little, little song. song little, you know. And so he's like the Noah's Ark. He just wild. Right? See the crucifix, the neon crucifix. And he on the cross. Just wilding. Right? And people show outrage. He showed outrage. And I don't know if you're familiar with his career and how his career, but he has thrived off a of controversy. He came out with that call me by your name thing and he was giving the devil a lap dance and just shock, shock value since since old time rolled and he came out of the closet. He, he's been kind of like ultra queer and messing with the sentiments of middle america and it's worked for him but anyway this time he went too far and he even acknowledged that he went too far in creating this song and and he apologized he apologized to those he offended uh well this is what really pissed them off what it was uh <laughs> He took the Eucharist. Uh, this is the shit. This is the shit. Uh, that really sent people off. 
uh, when he was partaking of the Lord's flesh. Oh, I stopped sharing. He was partaking of the Lord's fresh and drinking of the Lord's blood. And he was just gobble, gobble, gobble. So this shit here, people were like, the fuck. Right? So you can follow the controversy yourself. I just don't know what I can play or share with you and what I can't. Because like I said, I've had a few videos snatched down. Like I was an obscure YouTuber. Very obscure. So it wasn't nobody bothering me and I wasn't bothering nobody. But I'm getting a little more attention, which I greatly appreciate, which I think I was long overdue. But beyond that, he apologized. And all these Christians came out fighting hard, hard in the motherfucking paint, fighting for Jesus because Jesus was offended. Now, as a person who's probably personally offended Jesus more than once, of course, Jesus ain't going to speak up for himself, let alone do anything for himself. And Jesus never commanded anywhere in the Bible that I know where he told his followers to speak up for him, to fight for him. And in fact, the few followers who did try to fight for him, he admonished them told them to lay down your arms so the same god that you worship that allowed a mortal man to 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 murder him and stab him and 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 to mock him and to maim him that same god who wouldn't speak up or fight for himself how do you justify taking upon yourself to fight for good jesus how can you speak up for Jesus, whether it's some blasphemous part pop star or some disrespectful atheist how dare you how do you rationalize it? How can you say I am Christ-like and a man who submitted to murder and you won't even submit to criticism and mockery? So anyway, Christians got together and did not stand for this offense. And then, of course, the movie, The Book of Clarence. Uh, and this was kind of back to back. You know, I pay attention. People say to me, people say to me, people. You don't believe in God, but you talk about God all the time. You don't believe in God, why are you always talking about it? Which uh, to me is absurdity. That To me, that is equivalent to somebody saying, why do black people always talk about race? Why do women always talk about patriarchy and gender? You know? You got fucking terminal cancer. Why all you think about every time I come around you, you talking about cancer. Shit's killing us. So not only have I been governed by religious people, the fucking president is a devout Christian Zionist Catholic. The people who write policies that govern my life all swear on the Bible, and most of them believe in God. I don't know anybody in the upper realms, uh, upper levers of government. Senator, who's an atheist senator? Name an atheist Supreme Court justice. So all the people that govern and control, not just the world, but my life and writing policies that apply to me are all believers. It'd be fucking crazy for me not to pay attention to religion. And what's really crazy is... Anyway. So anyway, that's my play. Oh, stop. Can y'all hear that? It won't stop. Anyway, the book of Clarence. I go to the website and all they're showing me is show dates how y'all know i'm in chicago how does the internet know i'm in chicago anyway the book of clarence is another movie that they deem to be blasphemous right let me just share this and, and move on with my life so the book of clarence and and y'all let this my wife told me to stop saying y'all i'm gonna say it. so this is the movie preview for the book of clarence which is a guy who basically, oh, there it is right there. A guy who basically shadows Jesus and thinks Jesus is a hustler and wants to kind of get in on that hustle, right? You ever see the movie X, Spike Lee's X with Malcolm X and Malcolm X came up to Malcolm X homie, played by Spike Lee, came up to Malcolm X and was like, what's the scam? What's the hustle here? Let me in on it. Because he didn't think that Malcolm X was sincere in his conversion. And so this is basically a dude who saw Jesus going around doing his thing. And he's like, yo, I'm going to do the thing. And I'm going to get some of that Jesus money too. And what's unique about this movie is that it has an all-black cast. And some people have accused it of advancing the 
black Hebrew Israelite myth that the first Jews were, were African black people. So anyway, all that aside, this movie failed. It did miserably. And it's generally a movie that it's a high budget movie that kind of confirms a lot of black people's disposition that Jesus was a black man and we are the original people of the world. And so black people being people of the word, black people are mostly Christians. A lot of more progressive modern Christians like to believe that Jesus was a black man of, uh, of, 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 uh, and the first Christians were black people and we are the true people of the club. Who, who, who. And so I could see how the production company say, well, this is like, going to have do Black Panther numbers. But because the angle they took the story is confirming that Jesus was a Black man, confirming that delusion, and uh, putting Black people in history where we have been deleted. But Black folks didn't want to fuck with this movie, and Christians in general didn't want to fuck with this movie because they felt that it did not pay pro proper reverence and respect to the greatest story ever told our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm looking at two instances where Christianity was offended in different ways. One in a movie, one in a song from a pop star, and how I listened to and I read these various articles of black Christians and black believers, and even some people who say I'm not religious or I'm not a believer, but I understand we should respect people and we shouldn't offend people. And they defeated these two. This is a failed movie. Hasn't made his budget. They said the movie is projected to be a bomb. It's not, not going to make back his budget. Maybe they can make some money on the back end through streaming. I have no real interest in seeing the movie. And Little Nas X, and I don't know any of his songs besides Call Me By Your Name. I mostly um, take notice of Little Nas X when he is involved in such controversy. And I think to myself, all these people are defending Christ, saving the Savior. Jesus Christ, in the millennia that black people have been worshiping Jesus Christ, has never spoke for us, has never stood for us, has never intervened on our behalf, not once. But we, every time Jesus is offended, every time the legacy or the reality of Jesus is called into question, you save the Savior. And so many people are just had do not question this. Because I would assert as a true believer, you are obligated to share the gospel. You are obligated to go and say, hey, have you heard the good news? Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And God, my God, intends to murder you. And not only murder you, but torture you for all eternity. But if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, acknowledge that he died for your sins and then follow his dogma to the best of your ability and pay for forgiveness when you fail, you can have everlasting life and live at the foot of this, mo this God who will tor torture everyone else, but allow you to live forever in worship and praise and honor of him. It's a bad fucking deal. I wouldn't take that deal even if it was a real deal. But if you really fucking believe that, I have to ask, and maybe y'all can ask, the Christians. Why are you fighting for Jesus, speaking for Jesus, condemning people on behalf of Jesus when Jesus himself did not condemn and there's nowhere in the scripture. And I don't care. New American verse, King James Bible, Two Wave Bible, the, the pre-Greek Greco-Roman translation, the pre-translation of the Bible. Show me in the Bible where it is required, demanded, or even permissible for followers of Christ to condemn or challenge within you. Show me. Show me. You're fighting for a God who won't fight for you. But even more interesting, you're fighting for a God who wouldn't fight for his damn self. That's hypocritical and contradictory. But here's another thing that really shows me that you are a member of a male chauvinist murder cult. When there are true offenses to Jesus, when Jesus and the Christian faith is truly under attack and truly being disrespected, y'all don't say a motherfucking thing. And 90 percent of the things that are truly degrading and exploiting Christianity, y'all support it. I'll just name a few. Number one, prosperity gospel. 
the vast majority of Christians have taken two positions. They embrace it or they are silent about it. Prosperity gospel does more to delegitimize and pervert the message of the gospel and the legacy of Jesus Christ than little Nas X twerking on a crucifix. I have not seen Christians denounce or organize themselves to challenge prosperity gospel. You got mega preachers with private jets who are leaders of a religion where your goddamn savior said it is easier for a camel. And I, in my life, haven't seen eyes of needles get any bigger or camels get any smaller. Jesus literally said heaven is off limits to rich people. And you motherfucker. Mm. You brothers and sisters will say yourself, not only will God aid you in getting rich, but your wealth is a sign of God's blessing. Y'all let Kanye West, Mr. Jesus Walks, stand there while he stood next to a fascist, racist, scumbag, predator, convicted rapist, not convicted, but punished Donald Trump was in a civil trial where he was accused of rape and he lost that trial so Donald Trump in the eyes of the law in the eyes of civil court is a rapist so you can say Donald Trump is a rapist and he's not in a position to call you out for defamation because there are legal documents that confirm what you're saying it is not slander it is a verified legal fact he sat next to a racist fascist scumbag philandering rapist and said god is using me to show out kanye said i am a billionaire i have a private jet i have access to the most desired uh synthetic white women that plastic surgeons can create and due to my success and wealth God is using me to show out. I am the very embodiment and evidence of God's grandeur and blessing. And then the motherfucker got on a private jet and gathered up some of the most talented people in our community and went all over the world singing gospel. Remember Kanye's gospel tool? And where was the Christian condemnation? To me, that was more obscene than Little Nas X. Because little Nas X, as far as I know, don't claim to be the embodiment of God's blessing and a living embodiment and evident, living, breathing evidence of God's greatness and God's blessing. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know if he's put himself. Y'all show me and I'll say he is. But Kanye is. Kanye put out a gospel album, Jesus is King. Uh, and then he toured around with this choir and these motherfuckers were in Europe. They were all over the world, hooping and hollering in the name of God. And that was just the day before he went. And guess what happened after that? These same people, and I'm so glad if they're, you know, the best thing about this is, uh, I don't want to get a strike. But the best thing about this is, this is his choir. All these fucking dancing monkeys. He should have put tails on these motherfuckers. Look at that. Singing Jesus. How you singing? Praising Jesus. So these people in this video and several others are attacking Kanye because Kanye didn't pay them. <laughs> you lay down with fleas, you wake up with dogs. <laughs> uh, He didn't pay these motherfuckers. And I'm like, hey, hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Your your reward is in heaven. <laughs> that means shit. And Kanye is a Christian fascist. So they told us, just like just like he believed slavery was a choice. Touring with Kanye and not getting paid, that sounds like a choice. So when he was doing that shit. And on the Kanye gospel tour, he didn't pay him. And I just hope Kanye never pays him. I hope all that money goes to more plastic surgery for his current wife. Because he's trying to have his 
current wife surgically morphed into his previous wife. And I hope that's where all his money goes. So, where's the outrage? That's true blasphemy. A believer can't actually engage in blasphemy. A non-believer can't be a heretic. Go read your fucking gospel. And I, I suspect most of y'all don't really read and understand your religious dogma. Because if you truly read the Bible and truly read more so importantly than the Bible, the true history of your belief system. I think most of you would be over here with me. I probably shouldn't have said monkeys. But they they were just standing up there dancing with us with that with that. Yeah, I probably I, I've gone too far. It's one thing to diss the almighty creator of the universe. It's another to use monkey in reference to black people. I apologize. I take that back. Don't put monkey tails. Put coon ears on them. How's that? You should put coon ears on all of them. They should all wear coon ears and blacken out their eyes because they're a bunch of coons. Just like anybody past, present and future that would associate themselves with coon yay west. But I digress. Also, the very people who taught you Christianity are trying to establish a Christian nationalist fascist theocracy. And I don't hear or see the outrage. I got here, but, but it's getting late and I want to open up for some Q&A. So I'm just going to say, because what I had planned to do is show these two things that I don't really consider to be offensive or blasphemous of Christ. That movie and Little Nas X, because these are people outside the grace, outside of blessings. The true people who, but when the people from within the faith, the people who have standing, who have status, who have leadership roles are people who publicly confess to be embodiments of the faith disrespect the faith y'all don't do shit y'all don't do shit the baptist convention has been sued for tens of millions of dollars for not only facilitating the sexual exploitation of children but covering it up over 30 Baptist preachers have been incarcerated or under investigation or under trial. I don't hear shit from you, but I see more outrage about a music video from a queer performer than about what's really clean up your house. Remember what I said? What I look like? Refusing to look in the crevices of my own house, but I walk out into the street and I want to inspect everybody else's abode. Right now, there is a full-scale Christian fascist movement. Right-wing reactionaries are, have taken over the Christian faith and are using it as a political tool to advance their economic agenda of industrial capitalism and using it to justify the final hyper-exploitation of the last remaining viable uh, ecosystems on this planet. Christians ain't saying shit. So I want to tell you, Christians, it is not biblical. It is not uh, Christ-like to defend the church. But if you do get it in yourself to defend the church, you shouldn't even be a participant in the church, let alone defender of the church. You should look internally first and look at the true people who are blaspheming and disrespecting your faith. Stop trying to save the Savior. The Savior does not need you. He is the Savior. The definite article. He's not a Savior. He's the Savior. And you look ridiculous speaking for, defending, or trying to champion the Savior when the work is done. What did Jesus say? It is done. But you know, because your faith is not rooted in logic, in evidence, in reason, that it is vulnerable because it is baseless and when you make bait, when you build, what did Q-Tip say? A weak foundation doesn't make a good home. Because the foundations of Christianity are so weak, the followers have to be so relentless and aggressive, so violent, so contradictory, so inconsistent, so hypocritical, because if they did not, 
Christianity would fall and Christianity will fall. The problem with Christianity falling is that there will be corrupt and delusional people who would just sit erect. There was a time prior to its embrace and adoption by the Holy Roman Emperor Constantine that Christianity was just an obscure cult. And then when the Anglican Church and the various churches, Christianity has always been rescued and advanced by genocidal tyrants. The reason why Christianity is so prominent is because most of the people are who worship Christianity are descendants of people who were said, praise this God or we'll cut out your tongue. And you walking around and instead of saying, hey, I believe this because I've been indoctrinated to do so because it is socially or culturally convenient to do so. You go and lie to yourself and everybody else and say, I believe this because the Lord spoke to me in English. And the Lord said to me exactly what I wanted to hear. The Lord didn't say take up arms against the government. The Lord didn't say go into the woods and fast and give up all earthly possessions. The Lord said get that job and roll into that program, deposit that check and, and, and treat yourself. It's funny how that works. I've never went to a pauper and he said, well, why are you sitting out here in the street? The Lord told me to live a life of absolute depravity, to live a life of, 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 of free of possessions. And because my reward is in heaven. God always seems to tell y'all exactly what y'all would have done if God didn't say shit to y'all. And I, I ask this question and I never get a, an intelligent or sincere answer, but I'll ask it one more time and then I'll open it up for y'all questions, comments and criticism. What would the world look like if God was nothing more than a figment of the human imagination? Then with that, that's all I got to say on that. And if you think what I've said here this evening has been divisive, good. <laughs> so anybody want to questions, comments, criticisms, if you'd like for me to share the link for you to come live for the last few minutes that we're on the air. I know this is probably the worst time to do this. Uh, but I also want to appeal for your support. You see the ticker tape across the bottom. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, you become a Patreon supporter. Cash app. Um, Venmo. Uh, or pray for me. <laughs> Whatever the Lord. If the Lord puts it on. I'm passing the digital uh, collection plate. Like I said. I, I should probably. Okay, I'll drop the link. And again, you can make questions, comments, and criticism. We'll kind of keep it tight. Uh, and if I miss your comments that you type in, forgive me because the comments kind of scroll by and I do miss things. So, and I've shared the link in the comments on YouTube. It seems like it only popped up in YouTube for some reason. But what do you want from me? So you can come on live. Uh, I don't see any questions or comment. Um, I do want to say, share this. Um, would you ever do shrooms to see? Let me tell you something. Uh, my family, not everybody, I know. I got relatives that watch this and they was like, why you go on your little show and say I'm, uh, I'm uh, on that stuff? My family has a history of addiction. And for most of my life, because my family struggles with addiction and my great aunt, bless her heart, my great, great aunt. See, that's the thing. I ain't going to go into that, but. I have an aunt who's almost 90 years old. And she told me years ago, it's like, we have an addiction gene. We have an addiction gene. So we are prone to addiction as a people. And so that kind of shook me, being that I grew up around addiction. I grew up, they call them trap houses now, but they used to call it the dope house or the crack house. So I grew up around drugs, like heavy. Cause I'd, like, I'd get up to go to school. And I'm in grade school. I'm in the fifth, sixth grade. And I got to in the, walk in the living room and there's syrup, Robitussin and, and, and a mountain of, and, and crack vials and powder cocaine. I grew up drugs are everywhere. Alcoholism. I grew up in the house with crack addicts, alcoholics. So all that to say is I've always had an aversion to any mind altering substances. I've never smoked weed. I was not a drinker. I, I just didn't do no kind of no substances, soft or hard substances, natural or otherwise. 
And so I did just recently started having a couple of glasses of wine, and that's a lot for me. So uh, would I ever do shrooms? Not currently, not likely. That's why I'll leave that. But I appreciate the question. But if I ever do shrooms, I'll come on the air and let y'all know how it happened. Don, how you doing this evening, brother? What's the deal, brother Diallo? How have Long you time been? no see. Where you been at? Um, trying to get my life together under this industrial capitalism. You know how I be. Oh, so okay. The impossible task. You got your hair did. I did. My mom did do that. Yeah, you got my your mom hair did. did. Right. Let me see your finger. Did you get your nails did too? Oh no, no, no. I do I need that. Oh. No, my nails look hair. like okay. my nails look like I ain't got a home. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. But your mm -hmm. hair did that's half of it. Just gotta get mm -hmm. your, your nails did and you straight. Right, right, What's right, up, right, bro? right, right. Bro, bro, so I was wondering, bro Diallo, if you had ever gotten into um, you know, the Huey P. Newton readers and um checked out that essay on the relevance of the church. Because and I wanted to come on here and you know get into that because you know recently um you know this religious trauma has been kicking my ass for lack of a better phrase right mm -hmm. so um recently a conversation with my little sis had brought me back to this essay and um my thing you know as far as like i i do want to say though because i had typed this in the comment and i like of course take what the hell i say with a grain of salt but i kind of did want to um kind of um advance what the rest of the comrades be saying regarding your um approach because in the essay, um, you know, on the relevance of the church, you know, Huey P. Newton basically says, you know, we have to work with the church, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he says, you know, now we say we're trying to merge theory with practice, so we're going to the churches now. I went to the church last week for the first time in 10 years, I guess. We took our children with us. We have a youth institute, the Samuel Napier Youth Institute. We have about 30 children now, we took them to the church and involved ourselves. We plan to involve ourselves in many community activities going through the behavior the church goes through in order to contribute to the community. We also hope to influence the church. And I'm sure the church will influence us. Remember that we said that even when whole societies and cultures meet, they are both modified by one by each other. And I'm saying that the very fact that we are there is the new ingredient to the church. And we know that we will be affected and hope that they will be affected. But but I warn you that we hope to have more effect than they. And now, I honestly, I want to present that too. But also, I, I don't feel that this contradicts. I feel that this adds. But my favorite part of this essay is where he, he Newton says, you know, Comrade Newton says, um, you know, religion is perhaps a thing that man needs at this time because science simply can't answer all the questions as far as I'm concerned um, when all the questions are not answered when the extraordinary is not explained when the unknown is not known then there is room for God because the unexplained and the unknown is God so I kind of wanted to get your interpretation of this need to work with the church being that one lasting institution of the African community but understanding that God is simply the unknown, the unanswer unanswering the questions and regarding to, you know, the, the comments or the uh, perception of your approach, Bro Diallo. Um, okay, uh, I'll try to answer that. It's kind of uh, long, but I have to say that there's um, Hugh B. Newton as we exist decades after his passing. Brother, I greatly respect and admire. Uh, he was wrong on that. There's no evidence that what he attempted or what he advocated has worked or that it has any potential for working. We also know we have too long of a recorded history of the established black church being an asset and an ally of our oppressors. Of being in opposition to revolutionary and radical changes. So I do not see the potential for the church because the black church is one of the oldest institutions. And remember, the black church didn't just coexist quite comfortably with Jim Crow. It also coexisted quite comfortable with slavery. It also coexisted quite comfortably with Jim Crowism. So even though a lot of our, our leaders came out of the church, they came out the church. Martin Luther King, Reverend Martin Luther King and Minister Malcolm X did not carry out their rebellions from within the church. And many of them, they were isolated and hounded and condemned by the established church. 
So I would say that uh, history has demonstrated that that was a noble effort that I respected. But I think it is, is an inaccurate one. I think we can't simply accept something as true or accept something as possible simply because we have a desire for it to be true or possible. But I got a lot of people waiting. I don't know if I spoke to your your the other half, but I nah, really nah, appreciate nah. it. And I want to make sure everybody gets on because I got about four people waiting. Who are bro? Do y'all look at Okay, come back though. Got it. I like seeing your hairstyles. And like I said, just adjust your cameras because your plants <laughs> on. I don't, I don't, you know, we're trying to be unified. I talked about unity, and I think that <laughs> you, you know, the Lord don't like a braggart. Beautiful snake plant. Oh, okay. Now you didn't start it something. Uh oh. <laughs> now you didn't start it something. Okay, let's go. You don't want to, huh? What you want to do? Uh -huh. I think we're going to, man, listen. You don't want to listen. See, you could, my mom could give you some tips. I'm telling you. Huh? My she mom can give me some tips. <laughs> if I'm dancing on the pole, she can give me some tips. But I don't want no tips for plants because I know what I'm doing. So the only way I get a tip from her is if I'm up on the pole. <laughs> I know my plants. My plants is fine. All right, bro. I want all right, to good leave night, a positive you. note, but you wouldn't let me. <laughs> good night, y'all. Y'all heard all, all that. <laughs> good night, y'all. All right, good night. Man, see why you, it's the community. Okay, W, questions, comments, criticisms. Um, Hello, uh, Mr. Diallo. Can you hear me? I'm well, yes. Great. I, I, I don't know. I was listening to you, and I mean... I have to say, I'm I, I'm very, I don't have my camera on, and I'm I don't have, I'm not using my full name because I am definitely like in the thick of the church. I mean, it's so like you know a lot of everything that's going on that I I mean that's going on is like really kind of shaking me. I've changed, um, you know, from what I grew up in. I think I was, I, w I didn't spend, I was a little more dedicated than you were. I didn't just spend a year and, and a few months or whatever in the faith, but I've, I've kind of, um, I would say augmented my belief and widened my belief in to who that, you know, God accepts and how he accepts us. But, but, you know, looking at everything that's happened in Palestine right now, um, just, all the things that are in the bible but we really don't deal with i mean it really it really it does bring up a lot of questions it does bring up a lot of questions and so i'm just i i guess i just wanted to to um to reach out and just um i don't know i, I just wanted to to, to say that I, a lot of things that you said have put more things on my mind i mean like you said we we don't say enough about the prosperity gospel and i grew up watching um you know my family my family serving in the church and i re I, I grew up watching the people who led my church become put themselves on a higher and higher pedestal while the people they said they lead go, go lower and lower and lower and get and get more impoverished i mean it's it was so crazy for me to see that they, I mean, they, we were building this pedestal for them. I mean, until the, you know, in the last few years, the man called himself a chief apostle. I mean, you know, it was, it was, <laughs> so I, I'm just, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I think I have a kind of distinctive voice. I don't know who will hear this, but, um, I'm just, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence and I'm like, you know what do you know what what's next for me what's next for my family and you know what i'm saying like um you know like what do we replace i i don't even know if the churches is i mean i think it is relevant but at some point most of our young people either leave or like like you said they just kind of become they kind of just become apathetic. Like this is the routine. This is what I do. And if if, if it's gonna get me into heaven, I'll I'll give that hour, you know, or three hours on a Sunday. So I just yeah, wanted well, to share that. I appreciate you, but the the, the evidence is showing that the young people are abandoning the faith by and large. 
Mm -hmm. um, and there's right. really no signs that they are projected to return to the faith as they grow older. So religion is losing its influence, but the religion is not going to go down without a, a, an aggressive fight up to and including establishing regressive theocracies, forcing people to worship and acknowledge mm -hmm. the power of God. So it, it is a fight that if I'm going to be honest with you, the, the data shows that we're winning. The church is losing power and relevance and reach. But we right. but it's but if we don't continue this fight, things can be reversed. So right. you know, this is a long multi-generational struggle, and it is part of the larger liberation struggle, I say. So I appreciate your 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 sharing. And I, I almost said I appreciate your testimonial. But man, keep fighting. <laughs> you know, Thank you. continue Thank on. You. All right, bro. Appreciate Peace. It. All right, we're gonna try to keep this short. I, I still got a lot of people waiting. I want to get everybody on, so you know, let's let's kind of uh, condense it down so we can get to everybody. And before my wife kick in this door and, and throw throw a, a a rolling pin at me for going so over time, so let's keep it tight and concise and try to get through as much as we can. Anton, you're live, Bro Diallo broadcast. How you doing, Diallo? Uh, I'm number well. one. Uh, number one. I don't want to show my plants, man, because I think I would shut it down. Um, we we okay. we we, we, we serious okay. over here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Number two. You see, I turned uh, the camera that way. Don't make me turn it the other way. I okay, but not nah, this ain't what we're here you, for. You're right. You're right. We're giving our enemies for. ammunition. They can be like them <laughs> atheists are just as greedy and prideful and yeah. boastful. So let's let's stop sinning. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I I think a lot of times I found out. I say um really quickly i found out about you through bpm um and and jared ball and you and geechee what y'all do on fridays you know i tried to never miss y'all um I, i've had put in the church i mean in the um in the chat open and honest I, i'm a church boy through and through i even went to a very conservative bible i'm, I'm from chicago i'm in chicago so a lot of times when i i'm commenting on stuff and right. you mentioned the city. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. Uh, which is why I, I you know, if I have tried to connect with you. So you be um, doing dips. What, what... No, I hate dips. <laughs> you ain't <laughs> a real Chicago, that, man. You ain't no more Chicago no, than look, me then. That's, that's the you, test. Could you say we ain't here talking about that, right? The old <laughs> school people love dips, but us, the younger generation, we ain't petty no more. Bless you your heart. Gonna oh, you gonna the shovel youth it out? The truth. Or, yeah, the youth you are the truth. Yeah, the youth are the truth. Right. Yeah. So Dibs is dying, and and thank God. Good. I mean, but Wonderful. I know, you know, whatever. Thank you. Okay, um, let's move on to less important so like I, issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> less important. Right. <laughs> Church through and through, um, but I have very seldom. I can't even think of a time where I've disagreed with you on your critique of the church. Um, I'm. My assessment is, is from yours. So like I said, I went to Bible college, but I got a, a good degree and all of that. But I've distanced myself so much from where I, the place that I've learned and those people um, because my ideology doesn't match up. So what I've been trying to do for the past year or so is learning from you guys. So I, you know, I, okay, that means we're buying Chomsky books. I got Dr. King books and and, and we, we, we want to learn what Marx and Lenin and everybody has said so we can combine uh, a theology with a lived reality and, a, and an experience um, because like I said what you have said I've, I've, I haven't found a, a disagreement yet um, and, and what you are saying as far as where the church has failed I think it's, it's, it's true um, you, you can argue it uh, I recently got into it with a, with a lot of people on Dr. King's day because I'm saying what we see from Dr. King and his work we don't see now um, within our cities in America as a whole, right. as you but the church very, never um, supported Dr. King at the height of his popularity. He did not have the support of the black church. I'm here in Chicago where Dr. King spoke at, I want to say three different um, churches. Um, Reverend Clay Evans at Fellowship had his, his new sanctuary sit, literally the beams sat there at 45th and Princeton place for seven years because old man Daly said, if y'all let Dr. King in your pulpit, he didn't um, change the zoning and he didn't allow him to build. That was his quote unquote punishment. So people have had to pay for it. You like Dr. King here and a lot of, that's the schism of the Baptist. We're not getting it. Yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I got with the schools. I, I know these things uh, right. deeply, but I think 
what you are saying, as I mentioned before, is it's true. You know, the I, you say this, you you call it a murder cult. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You you're not gonna hear me say that it's not. Um, I'm a I'm a minister and all. I'm not pro Israel. I'm not dispensational um, because Jesus wouldn't be. Dr. King wouldn't be. Even though people try to use that clip of him talking about Israel out of context, out of, yeah, um, yeah, out of context, um, free free Palestine. We got a Gaza here in Chicago. That's what the hood is. We got right. Gazas all over. Um, but what you're saying, you mentioned about prosperity gospel. People are either silent about it, or or people are engaging in it, and that's where we find uh, a lot of our failures. As uh, I think you mentioned, or Jared mentioned about uh, Nixon. And we went from black power to black buying power. And that's what we see in our churches a lot. And we ain't just talking about Creflo Dollar. You can mention the yeah. guy out there. Um, I'm not going to, we're not going to say names, but I, I want to put it out there that your your analysis, your assessment, your critique is 100%. I appreciate you saying it. It's and I appreciate on. the work you're doing, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And, but and I'm, I like wish I you said, were, the, were the norm or the standard in the church. Maybe we could have a different dialogue. Maybe yeah. QEP's mission but, could be carried forward. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say legitimately, um, that's why I, I'm always looking for your program. I'm always looking for what, what's being said on BPM um because what you what you all you even saturdays with renee um eyl what, what we are learning through these programs uh, is true liberation movement yeah, and not through necessary. how we can how we can climb the liberation ladder if you will through the system that oppresses us but right. like i said last thing i'll appreciate say i appreciate you. you all right have uh, a good evening bro around. let's get a latte us uh oat milk latte all right uh when i said oat milk he jumped off okay oak oak press for time Look. question comment or criticism can you hear me yep loud and clear oh awesome um brother thank you very much for this platform thank you like that like bro john henry clark said that, that when you submit to the god of other people you become the spirit just laid to them what black people that, especially those Christians who, Africans who claim to be Christians, what they do not understand is they are a victim of what they say, uh, religion is the opium of the masses. And like every opioid addict, it's difficult to get off the opioids. Almost impossible. You find an, someone who's addicted to let's say fentanyl or any opioids and let them not have it when they want to have it. They're going to want to kill you. So I come from Nigeria. I used to be a member of the Mormon church. Wow. I, I was a member, I was a, mem a member of the church in eight years. So that I want to say, I disagree with you to a large extent that, uh, we are winning. We are not because the church out there is a mass. When I was a member of the church in Nigeria, it used to be baptism 20, 20, 25 every week. The people are going in there in a maximum drill. And the problem that people don't actually understand is that we are, we've been conquered by these people. And I, you always tell, uh, there was an uncle of mine who is a pastor. And I tell him, you are currently having a spiritual mental illness i've forgotten who said this thing and said one of the one of the one of the greatest atrocities of slavery is that it cost mental slavery i think it is um uh, uh i've forgotten his name now amos wilson i think it was amos wilson that said or dr ben I don't know. or maybe so I'm, I'm not sure i think he said one of the consequences of slavery is that it costs mental slavery now i i work in the field of psychiatry and one of the definitions of delusion is fixed, false, and firm belief. I repeat it, fixed, false, and firm belief. That is delusion. That is the textbook definition of delusion. So our people are currently having spiritual mental illness and believing in the instrument of what is being used to subjugate and perpetrate slavery is a, is a symptom of having that delusion. 
like I said, I've read, I read the Bible three to four times. I read the Book of Mormon multiple times. And when I came, I saw the missionaries here and they said, Joseph Smith. And I like, listen, this guy was just trying to whitewash history because the, the, the Mormon left Missouri and came to, came to Utah in 1856. By then, Utah was not part of the United States. Utah became part of the United States in, I think, 1890-something or something. So he, the United States kicked him out. They kicked him out of the United States at that time. So in the Book of Mormon, they're saying the Lamanite and listen, our people are currently having spiritual mental illness. So big ups to you, Rodiado, for this. You, you are, you are, we, you are passing the button of what uh, uh, someone like the likes of Ma uh, Malcolm X, uh, Sister Marinda, uh, Sister Marinda Anid, uh, Sister Do uh, Do Dr. Francis Chris Walsing. We will have to continue to talk about this. But uh, thank I, you very I, much. I, I, will, I appreciate you all. You have a good evening, bro. You, you too, sir. All right. Mormonism. I always said if I was going to go to heaven, I want a Mormon heaven. You get your own planet. You know, <laughs> so Mormon Mormons came up with the best heaven, if they if not the worst Christian cult there is. At least they got a good idea for heaven. Uh, RBG Guap, what's up? Let me uh, um, you can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Perfect, perfect. Uh, first off, Uhuru, a BB for ODA, Wiati, and where they on way, whatever. You know african word we can use you know to liberate ourselves mentally um i appreciate the work that you've been doing and i just wanted to add on to this conversation um it's a particularly touchy subject because i'm an african man right so you know <laughs> my folks is christian right and then all the other ones who uh, converted out of Christianity are uh, mostly Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, all within I the, the fire. fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all in the Abrahamist circle. Um, I want to I wanna say, tell me what you think of this. Um, it's not like it's a foreign concept, but I just don't hear it spoken of a lot in terms of this um, African Abrahamism. Um, and it's based around the sustainability of Africa, right? My biggest thing that I, I've been really hooking on to and repeating is that Africa is sustainable. African people invented sustainability. When you think about concepts like Ubuntu, um, it makes me think about sustainability, what we consider now, you know, what the uh, Eurasian world had to genocide and hyperdevelop to get to is kind of what we naturally walked into giving our our landscape our environment and um basically the concept is that you know we created sustainable civilizations for ourselves so we never really needed to hyperdevelop you know this goes into the uh the the you know the crest and the um you know the ice man all of that stuff it goes into that but it's it's more about us being spooky superstitious mm. or spirited as a people right right and it basically is the concept that we felt blessed and favored like we naturally let's just say in our genes the reason we have these tropical bodies is because we come from an abundant place right so we feel like Kendrick Lamar, everything gonna be all right. <laughs> and yeah. that's that. So what happens is I believe, you know, this would take a great deal of anthropological speculation, right? But I believe that we developed this nature over time where we never wanted to lose our abundance. We learned to appreciate it or be grateful which developed into a, a type of determinist outlook where we think that everything is meant to happen yeah and one of that's one of the key elements that makes us susceptible to myth it makes us susceptible 
right to what they you know the stereotypes they get put on is the the emotion yeah you know, well yeah it, like i said dr ben said um no no it wasn't it was dr clark said we are the true believers and and he also said when you see the greatest quality about a people if you look on the flip side of that you'll see the 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 greatest fault or vulnerability of the people so um the fact that we are um xenophilic as opposed to xenophobic the fact mm -hmm. that we um for for generations lived within the limits of ecology and valued ecology and then we were forced to live within an economy and we're mm -hmm. trying to extract things from an economy that we get freely we have to pay for things within an economy that we get freely from mm -hmm. ecology so mm -hmm. yeah you're you're on point with with this kind i i've uh, every organization i've been in um and or and and groupings that i've always advanced um sustainability and uh trying to articulate that we need to be make restoration of ecosystems a fun as as important as decolonization and liberation of humans so i think you're on the right page and i fully agree i hate to have to shut this down yeah, because, I understand. I understand. Uh, yeah I'm, I'm i'm well over time but yeah i think um i definitely align with with what you're on and i unite with, with what you're asserting about the african mentality and african evolution are not just our physical evolution but our psychological and cultural development that was a byproduct of our ecosystems and our our natural evolution I, that's so tune in again and please jump back with me because I would like because I can talk about sustainability and ecology. I don't think we talk about that enough, but we we try yeah, to yeah. jump up and down on on theology with both feet today. <laughs> oh yeah, for right. sure, for sure. Oh well, right. yeah, you know we designed to last forever, man. Let's make it last forever, man. All right, all right, all right. peace. Okay, this will be our final one. All Black Times, your live question, comment, and criticism. And I appreciate you waiting so long, bro. I'm sorry. It took, <laughs> Hello, bro, Diallo. You have the hear me? of a saint. Yes, I hear okay, you. Uh, so first off, let me jump into it. Uh, uh, my wife bought your Patreon for me, and she's been, you know, kicking my ass about I'm supposed to get the mug or some shit yeah, like that. Coming, bro. Hey, listen, I am. Committed. Hey, you have so... my spirit. It's coming. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm on it. So. You know, you were patient. I just gave you compliments for patience. <laughs> Way too long. But yeah, yeah, I think I think I think my wife has been there to make up for my shortcomings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but most of it is my fault. You know, I've been wanting to come on your show for a while, like, uh -huh. and we've spoken on Patreon for a while. But you know, I I guess you know, yeah. But anyways, let me just jump right into it. I love your show. Thank you. And it has made my ideology very fluid. I can remember that episode you were talking about ideology being fluid, and you know it has helped me a lot. And even in this, with the last speaker when you were talking about sustainability, you know when I get into it with you know people in because I'm in MOP, and when I get into these discussions, and you know they want to develop like the west and i'm like are you not looking at the cost of that right now and you know what it will get us to develop like that and things like that so like i said i appreciate your show a lot and to religion i i was a christian so i remember the very first time like you said like you prayed to god and it was when i was about to get into university and I didn't want to go to a private university because you know it was more expensive and so basically i prayed to god and said you know if i get into this school i'm going to serve you blah 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 blah. i got on my knees and as an adult now i remembered even then i remembered what i did was i just picked you know i know i didn't like maths and all that and i just picked the topics i was best at because you just have to you know get like four topics and you know pass like an average of the four or something like that yeah. four subjects rather so i got into the school <laughs> and anyways spent like nine years in that <laughs> yeah you know drug addiction and things like that wow. that was the second time i tried to believe in jesus and you know i went to like a we are but was a christian we are and they fed us nothing but food water and jesus like you know 
And after the first phase of the rehab, I got out, I had a girl then, and, you know, first thing we did the deed, and I was going back to the second phase. And second phase, same thing, I tried to, you know, but I stopped doing drugs, but it wasn't even Jesus that helped me stop doing drugs. It was one man just gave a speech one day and he said, you know, that the problem is not the drug addicts. The problem is that the drug addicts are not useful in society. And he just made me wake up and say, oh, yes, exactly. Like, you know, I just need to fit myself somewhere. And, and it was never about Jesus. And second time I prayed, I got on my knees and I said, you know what, God, I'm leaving this right now. Whenever you need me, like the guys in the Bible, just come and pick me up. Like, I'm done. And I left on from there. Then ran into Shenkuti. They ran into you. And since then, it's been, you know, it's been, it's been a blessing in these dark times, basically, because sometimes, you know, you get so spooky and like, you know, what's the point? And, you know, it's good to have people like you keep going. And, you know, yeah, so I just wanted to get on give you a shout out i appreciate you bro and i appreciate you sharing that you know it's kind of are you familiar with gay bar mate no he kind of like where you talked about addiction and the causes and remedies for addiction kind of like were you saying you know integrating people back into society and and acknowledging and 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 uh work their worth and and uh human connections so i i appreciate you saying that i would encourage you to look into his um i mean his scholarship around addiction because you know and your story is very powerful and useful and i do appreciate it yeah then also um i know and i see when you say you know african religions use it as you know just as the western religion for merited favors and things like that Mm -hmm. but you know being that I speak Yoruba, I understand Yoruba. When I was kind of dabbling into it, like, you know, the words were more, I'll say, kind of pictorial from an intellectual perspective. You know, you could like, they're basically giving attributes to oranges that you could see naturally happen, basically, mm-hmm. and, you know, things like that. Like, so from an intellectual perspective, I feel like it has, you know, some value although like you said it's not revolutionized most of them just want to you know do the same thing and yeah. that's my biggest problem with it and yeah i think that's about it for me yeah yeah i i think yeah i um i was um have been to several akan and yoruba rituals and i had an ancestral and orisha shrine and it was more from a a, a cultural and 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 um research perspective kind of just mm-hmm. re- discover my my ancestral roots but i see the value in there but i would go to the rituals and see that they were pretty much engaging the ancestors and the orisha and making the same material requests people were making of jesus christ and the prophets so uh yeah it has been contaminated by the colonial uh um ravages and colonial indoctrination but again i appreciate you um I hope you do contact me again and I will fulfill my obligations to you post haste. So they will be coming out soon. Appreciate you, brother. Mm -hmm. Good night, y'all. Good night. All right, everybody. That was a good, good, some good um, conversation. Um, I was preparing and putting my dukes up for some, some fire and brimstone, but everybody was even the believers, even the, uh, Christians and the other believers, everybody was respectful and and um, and uh, articulate. So we didn't get the drama we was looking for. Maybe next time. I appreciate y'all again. Like, share, share, subscribe. Shout out to everybody. Everybody I owe all my patrons that I owe packages to. You know, check the mail. The check is in the mail. You know how I do. I'm I'm I live on the south side of Chicago, so I'm starting to pick up some of that slick cat stuff they do down here. But the, listen, the check, not the check, but the packages and the things I owe you will be in the mail soon. All right. And I still appreciate y'all, even though I, I, I fall short of my obligations sometimes. I appreciate y'all, and I will see y'all uh next Monday with the Bro Diallo broadcast. Peace.